Did you ever think you would make it? I feel I'm so close, I could take sweet victory. I know this life meant for me. Yeah, yeah. yeah, why would you bet on Goliath when we got bet David? Yeah. Value taming, giving values contagious. This world of entrepreneurs, we get no value to hate. And I ain't running, homie, look what I become. I'm the, I'm the one. All right, episode 365. Hope you had a good weekend watching the Super Bowl. Maybe one of the best Super Bowls we've had in the last decade or two. It's definitely my top three of the last 20 years. The fourth quarter. Uh, I think the fourth and the quarter in overtime was great. First three quarters were It was lame. fantastic. I think you guys had a bet. We're going to finalize it today sometime on the show. I don't, Someone's got to pay up to bet. somebody. I don't, know. I don't even know. Someone's got to pay up to somebody. That. Taylor Swift. Money changing Record-breaking attendance. I said between 120 to 130 will watch. The record prior to this was 114.4 million in 2015. They had 123 million people wow. watch the Super Bowl. Record breaking bets, $23 billion, not including their $500. Just a lot of stuff that went on with this last Super Bowl. We'll talk about that. Tucker's interview with Putin. We haven't yet reacted to it. Okay. We haven't yet reacted to it. We'll talk about the uh, uh, back and forth, the two hours what it was like, and then what Tucker said about the interview afterwards was also very interesting. And then the backlash, what Chris Wallace called him. I mean, this is a, maybe even at one point, a co-worker of his, calling him a useful idiot. Chris Wallace calling Tucker a useful idiot. Is he right or is he just envious? The question where maybe the, the you know, Kremlin trusted sitting down with Tucker maybe more than Chris Wallace because Tucker is at a whole different level. We'll definitely talk about that. Hillary Clinton okay, is has been saying a lot of things lately. One of the things she said is Joe Biden's age is a legitimate issue, which we'll discuss. And then uh, on top of that, we had a couple other stories where Biden uh, doesn't add. He chooses not to do the typical Super Bowl interview. Three minutes was James Carville said something about that, saying the reason why this happens, he'll give you some insight on why that is. But at the same time, they did do a commercial defending something. And I want you to see this commercial from the White House. We'll play it for you. A little weird. Brace for impact. If you're an editor or creative or a marketer, you're not going to like the video. But just the messaging was awkward. And then New York Times, you know what happens when you're a Democrat and you're the president? You know things are not going well for you, Vinny, mm-hmm. when New York Times is no longer a true believer. Mm-hmm. And I just flipped. That's scary. That just flipped. But at the same time, do you know what just happened? Well. Gavin Newsom said he's never met a man like Biden mm-hmm. and the level of intelligence this man has and his loyalty. When I play this clip for you, either Newsom is right or he deserves an Oscar. Okay. Because I've never seen a performance like this before. <laughs> Rob, we're going to have to play that clip later on, so let's get that one ready as well. The Senate bill, folks, whatever you were doing this morning, it's officially passed. Now it's got to go to House, and we're going to see what they're going to do. And Zelensky tweeted something very sweet to McConnell, and, and I think it's Schumer, very sweet, very kind on uh, raising money. So it went from the border bill To take out the border bill, just give us $94 billion bill. Unbelievable. While you were watching a Super Bowl. Yeah, That's strategic. you got to give them credit for the strategery, right, that's (laughs) taking place. Very impressive. Denver mayor announces reduction in city services due to migrants. Why Hollywood should be terrified of YouTube, not Netflix. Then we got Janet Yellen saying high prices are here to stay. Maybe she needs to talk to Biden's commercial that he made. A woman firing rifle. Killed by two off-duty officers at Joel Osteen's church. The one part of the story nobody wants to talk about is the fact that this shooter, identified as a transgender woman with a free Palestine written on a gun. Weird. Yeah, it's kind of weird, which I know you got some things to say about it. We'll we'll cover that part as well. And then aside from that, Trump said there's no way Taylor Swift will endorse Biden. Maybe he's right. Elon Musk is saying he's planning on ditching his phone number to only use X for texts and calls. A real estate tycoon is buying up $900 million worth of San Francisco offices. I'm going to show you a video of a billionaire on what he's saying is going on in America that's different than everybody else's. Trump is now a pro-Bud Light supporter, Anheuser-Busch, and that came after UFC boss Dana White urged him to back the company, urged him that CNBC, I mean, it sounds kind of like Dana told him what to do. I don't think Trump rolls that way, but we'll see what happens there. 
Aside from that, there's a bunch of other things going on with the economy, which we'll get into. Did I miss anything? One of the bigger things I miss is the fact that Trump said he would disregard NATO's treaty urging Russian attack on U.S. allies. And people lost their mind, especially Joy Reid. She was not happy about oh, that no. comment. So it's, it's a little bit upsetting. Anyways, before we get into these stories, a couple things I want to do. Today, for those of you guys that picked up the merch, we're going to give away some of this memorabilia and uh, autograph Ryan Garcia gloves, autograph Tim ba- uh, Trevor Bauer baseball, and five uh, uh, Choose Your Enemies Wisely books. Rob, we're going to do that as well at the end of the podcast. For those of you guys that order, some of you guys have been asking about PBD Podcast gear. We finally have it. Here's your PBD Podcast gear you were asking about. That mug, if you order today the PBD Podcast hat or the PBD Podcast shirt combined together, you get the mug for free on the house. We'll send it over to you. And remember, if shipping, if uh, supply you order over $70, shipping is free. And this mug you see me holding right now, when you put a hot coffee or hot tea or hot water in it, it turns into the PBD podcast colors mm. that we got. So if you're at the office working, if you want to go brag about the fact that you listen to content and you can entertain opposing ideas and see you could spark a conversation with others, go get yourself the hat, the shirt, and we'll send a mug. Over to you, Rob. Let's put the link below for people to be able, be able to order it. But aside from that, let's get right into it. Okay, so I think the first thing we want to get into is Tucker. Is that fair to say? Let's sure. talk about Tucker. So five things to know about Tucker Carlson's interview with Vladimir Putin. I'll read this story, and then obviously we'll give our commentary here as well. This is from The Hill. Unfiltered views. Putin utilized the interview to express his views on Russia-Ukraine relations, stating we, we have every reason to reaffirm that Ukraine is an artificial state that was shaped at Stalin's will. Carlson's minimal pushback prompted criticism about unchecked falsities in Putin's statements. Number two. Confidence on Ukraine. Putin projected confidence, describing the conflict as a matter of self-defense. It is very easy when it comes to protecting oneself, one family, one's homeland. He said that when he was asked about God and being a Christian. And then later on, he says, I have never refused negotiation, meaning he's open to the ideas of negotiation. Number three, anti-propaganda, anti-U.S. propaganda. Putin cr- criticized the U.S. and its leaders, alleging interference from intelligence agencies, questioning the need for financial support from Ukraine. He echoed sentiment from American right-wing figures suggesting the U.S. prioritized domestic issues over funding Ukraine. Number four is push for reporters' release. We'll talk about that. Number five, Russia's media coverage. We'll talk about that. Tom, your thoughts when watching the Tucker-Putin interview, what was your biggest takeaway? Well, my my takeaway was that there is only one guy since this war started and since the world stage heated up. I mean, Putin's done interviews with people before, U.S. journalists and stuff like that. Even some time ago, you know, yeah, I won't go into that guy just yet. But what was interesting about it to me is Tucker's the guy with the guts to come in there and talk to him in the middle of, of a hot conflict and sit there and, and go into it. And what I found very interesting was, you, you know, it's very interesting to see body language. You can spin a lot of words. You can spin a lot of statements and talking points. But I thought Putin's body language, he looked confident and he looked healthy. There's a lot of people saying, oh, he's got cancer. You remember all that over the winter? Oh, he's got cancer. Look at him trembling. He's wearing a blanket. He was wearing a blanket outside at a Russian parade where it was like minus 10. You know, <laughs> I would have been having a blanket, you know. So I thought Putin looked confident. I thought he looked poised. I thought he was in command of his historical facts. And that's the book on Putin, not just maybe over preparation and getting him ready for it. I, I kind of saw that. And then I, there's also a dangerous side of Putin, but I saw that. And I think that's what the world needs to see. You get these perspectives on the foreign dictators. So you understand the whole playing field. I like that. Now, Chris Wallace calls Tucker worse than a useful idiot. He said, sharply criticized Tucker Carlson's recent interview with Putin condemning his Former colleague as a useful idiot and characterizing the exchange as lacking substance. Wallace remarked, Putin droned on for two hours and seven minutes while Tucker sat there like an eager puppy, highlighting Carlson's passive role in the conversation. Drawn on his past interviews with Putin, Wallace highlighted the absence of probing questions from Carlson, particularly on sensitive topics like Russian military actions, human right abuses. Wallace asserted that uh, Carlson's interview approach seemed tailored to appeal to pro-dictator sentiments of the MAGA base rather than pursuing genuine journalistic inquiry. Putin's interview with Carlson marked his first engagement with a Western media figure since 2022 invasion of Ukraine. Adam, your thoughts on this? 
Look, I can say a lot of great things about Tucker Carlson. Smart, opinionated, intelligent. He's got morals. He's got values. Uh, the one pushback I will give to Tucker Carlson is if you want a softball interview, you go to Tucker Carlson. Uh, I was disappointed to see that he didn't push back against Putin. Now, uh, if I was in the Kremlin right now, I would probably be fearing for my life and getting thrown out of a window. I don't know what floor they were on when they did this interview. Uh, if there were any windows around, that would probably be sort of detrimental to his mental health right there. But listen, we, we're, we're fans of Tucker, but you got to speak truth to power. You sit there and you let Putin just go on on a history lesson for freaking Russia. You didn't, where, you didn't like that, Adam? I, I think I, I, didn't, I didn't come to see Putin give a history lesson but, of Russia. But Putin, I want to know what the hell's going on but, in the world today. But Putin, Putin right from the rip said, this isn't, we're not doing a show, we're having an interview. So to, to know why we are where we are, I think it was amazing that he goes, okay, here's the entire history. He had freaking archive document. He goes, take back, your, it's in Russian, but go figure it out. Why are we where we are right now and why your side is doing this? I think it was actually smart to let the world know. Because everybody was like, what, uh, what, what is he talking about? He let you know why we are where, we, why, like why we're here. But, but here's what he's saying. What he's saying is, and he's speaking on for himself, not the podcast. When he say we, you, yourself, right, this is my your, yeah. your view, yes. right? He's not talking your view. Yeah. He's saying, and I would say this to Tucker's face. I respect may him. I? Yes. May yeah. I? Go ahead. He's saying he felt the interview was soft. You're, you're saying Putin came with his agenda. The question is, how do you judge how Tucker did and how do you judge how Putin did? I, I, okay, so, well, I think, I think like we said, uh, uh, Putin had an agenda. He came in there. He knew what he was going to do. But by the way, if you think about it, he had a 30-minute memorized history report on that entire region. Okay, the guy, he, he came prepared. Tucker, I mean, at what point, though, Adam, there's, and you nailed it about what floor they're on. You can't be over there talking trash to this guy, like trying to piss him off on purpose, because guess what? You're in like enemy territory, so to speak. But I think uh, I think it's I think it's sad that it had to take a reporter to go over there to talk to somebody that we're beefing with, that we're told that we're supposed to hate. Not everybody, the Russian Putin price hike, all that crap is absolutely like BS. And we're seeing it with last night with the, the $95 billion. We know what's happening, okay? We want money, we want money, we want war, we want war. We want to, to beef with, with Russia. And I think one of the main things, Pat, that I took away that was pretty interesting was when he asked him about the Nord Stream pipeline. He goes, who, who blew it up? I mean, if, you're, if we're talking about softball, that's not a softball. Who blew it up? And he laughed and he goes, <laughs> you did. And, and uh What's his name? Tucker goes, I was, I was busy that day. He goes, no, no, your CIA did it. And a little fun little nugget that not, not a lot of people paid attention to, Putin goes, who's done this homework, obviously, he goes, you know, CIA, the same CIA that you applied for, but you didn't get in. And he goes, thank yeah, God you didn't get true. in. And Tucker's face was like this. He didn't make a, a reaction, even though he was getting all of it in his ears. But guys, let's be honest with each other. We know what the United States and, and NATO and all these allies want. We want to go to war. There's no money in peace. And that's why they, they hate this, because you get to hear what the other side is saying. And what did Putin say over and over and over? When's the last time you talked to Biden? He goes, I don't even remember. I, I, nobody's talking to him. And the guy's saying, I want dialogue. Let's have a dialogue. But you can't make him look like he's a human being, because you can't go to war with somebody that has good points of view. So here's what I would say, my takeaway. Um, good, good commentary from all of you guys. Uh, but I'll, I'll say this from my end. Number one, he got 199 million views on Twitter. It got 16 million views on Twitter, on YouTube. Uh, there was, you could tell that the alpha is definitely Putin for obvious reasons. This guy's seen no a lot question. more than Thanks. Tucker has seen and it's yeah. not even a question about it. He's a street guy going up against a journalist who's gone to good school, lived in good places. Tucker knows you're going up against a heavyweight. This is not like a regular person you're talking mm -hmm. to here. And that was obvious from the get-go. It took 30 seconds for you to know who was in charge of that interview, and it was Putin, okay? Instantly like that. Um, so then, you, you know, you watch some of the conversations that was had. You see one part where, hey, uh, uh, China's purchasing power overtook the U.S. a long time ago. He's talking about China. Russia's expected to be embraced by the West after 1991, the whole conversation about NATO, pleaded with NATO to not expand. They kept this expanding. He had a conversation with Bill Clinton where he said, would you have joined NATO? He says, I talked to Bill Clinton about, hey, 
can, you know, about the conversation of possibilities of us joining NATO, Bill Clinton got back to him and said, no, you can't join NATO, not at this time. Guess what? Uh, Tucker asked, would you have joined? He says, we would have definitely considered joining NATO. But guess what? That's during the Bill Clinton time. Didn't happen. The CIA talk, which was kind of very interesting. They didn't want you to join. The discussion with Bush, the fact that they're ahead of everyone in hypersonic missiles and getting better. The, the Nazi vacation, which he talked about Ukraine and, you know, what is it that you guys are all defending him and what he's doing? Do you forget about the history? He says, I even asked Ukraine one time. I said, didn't your father, not Ukraine, Zelensky one time, didn't your father fight against these guys? What are you doing fighting for these guys? Now, obviously, you have to know the history to see what points, because you have to know that Putin came into this interview knowing who he's talking to. Here's who Putin came talking to. In his mind, a strategist at his level, I guarantee you, He's not talking to Tucker. He's talking to Zelensky. He's talking to Biden. He's talking to Trump. He's talking to Xi. He's talking to Newsom. He's talking to Obamas. He's talking to Wall Street. He's talking to billionaires. He's talking to every single body. And he touched on every point. Whenever you go on stage, and let's just say Tikar and I will have a conversation, and I'll say, Tico, here's the things I want to hit. I got these 25 points I want to hit, okay? And I'll go give a two-hour talk, and I don't have anything in front of me. I'm just kind of hitting the things, and I want to hit all my points. I want to call out every single body, every bad behavior I don't like, everything that I'm not supportive of, and everything I like that I'm seeing. I'll get on the stage. The first thing to put, uh, Tikran will come back to talk to me. You know what he'll say? You said everything you wanted to say, you covered it all, right? Meaning a message is being given to every freaking person. He got that part done, okay? Putin got that part done. He gave a message to every single body. And you don't have to like the guy. You have to understand that that is not an easy skill set to have. He's the number one world leader right right now. Uh, It's not even close. Biden's, I don't even know if Biden's number two right now, but he's definitely number one right now. Whether you like him or not. So let me continue with this. Mm -hmm. He says, "Don't, don't remember the last time I spoke to Biden. Why does it matter if I have to remember? I have a lot of things to do. He says, well, listen, you started a war with Ukraine. What do you mean you don't remember the last time? I like the fact that Tucker pushed him on that. How do you not remember the last time you spoke to Biden? He says, well, I don't remember. I don't remember the last time I spoke to him. And then, you know, NATO's trying to scare its population, you know, with all the Russia's this, Russia's that. So, again, he played that, that card. Would you send your troops to Poland? He said what? Only if they attack, because everybody's worried after Ukraine, Poland is next, right? Only if they attack. He says all this stuff, U.S. is worried about funding Zelensky and Ukraine. Do you not see the issues that's going on with your border? Do you not see the issues that's going on with inflation? Do you not see the issues that's going on with uh, your, your election? You're worried about Ukraine? Is that really what U.S. is worried about? Do you not see the issues U.S. is having right now? So that was a direct call out there. Who bombed Nord Stream? You already addressed it. He says, you guys did, of course. You know that. And then, you know, interested capability, the U.S. propaganda. He called that the uh, uh, global media. Sanctions was a huge mistake. The dollar was the cornerstone of the U.S. power, but other countries are kind of getting a little bit slower and a li- little bit more hesitation. Helping with inflation, keep printing money, money, money. He says that's not the way to do it long term. Uh, fewer countries are going to want to be closer to U.S. if you guys keep doing that. U.S. allies are reducing dollar reliance. His words. U.S. allies are reducing dollar alliance. Then he said the boogeyman is China. He says, China's always been easy for me to negotiate with because they always want to negotiate. So I've always been able to negotiate. He said, don't get me wrong. We're neighbors, so we always have problems, but we have an easy time negotiating with each other. And then he says, until 2022, 80% of Russian's trade was done in dollars. Now it's down to 13%. Let me say it one more time. Two years ago, up until 2022, Russian trade, 80% of Russian trade was done in dollars. Now it's down to 13%. Mm-hmm. And then he talks about his reputation. He says, a lot of you guys keep making fun of George Bush as if he's a dummy. He's actually a very smart man. And he's, you know, he kind of built up President Bush, which was very interesting seeing him do that because, you know, some people would be like, well, he's a Trump guy. Well, if he's Bush, Bush's establishment, what is he doing? Giving him credit. He did that. And then, uh, you know, sanctions, you know, the, the Russia transactions in one went from 3% to now 30%. OK, so these are these are all things that's going on. Then he talked about Elon Musk. you got to be kind of careful with Elon Musk. He wasn't like, hey, he's going to do whatever he's going to do. But there's got to be a negotiation with Elon Musk because what's going to happen if AI gets a hold of everything and it's kind of advancing and accelerating? We're going to have certain kind of restrictions there. And then a few other things numbers wise, G7, where it was at in 92 versus today. Now, BRICS is ahead of G7 and 
there's a lot of there's a lot of power that they have. So we can make fun of these guys as much as we want. By the way, final thoughts on Tucker, and then I'll come to you, and then we'll go to our sponsors. So there's different kinds of interviewers, and there's different kind of interviews you have to prepare for. If you have a 45-minute interview with somebody, it has to be boom, boom, interrupt, boom, 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 boom. You know, because like even with DeSantis, you're boom, boom. I have to interrupt because he's only giving me an hour. If you give a two-hour interview, guess what? You don't have to interrupt, okay? And by the way, guess what? If you're in a negotiation with the enemy and you're the interviewer, and let's just say the guest you're interviewing is an enemy of the world, hypothetically to America, who do you want speaking more? That guy. <laughs> that guy, because the more he talks, the more he reveals. Yep. So if you're looking at it from that standpoint, what is an inter- what is a neg- hostage, ne- hostage negotiator supposed to do? Listen to the Ask <laughs> and listen. Yeah. <laughs> I thought Tucker did a phenomenal job getting him to talk. If the job was to talk, he talked. Could Tucker have asked about freedom of speech? Yes. But he said, I didn't do it because everybody else does. Could Tucker have spoken to him about... You know, the, the situation with what's going on with, you know, other issues of Nelvani, yes. But he says, I didn't because everybody else is already doing that. I cover the stuff that nobody else is covering. So, you know, I thought it was pretty impressive. I thought the world got smarter for the people that did watch it. And kudos to Tucker for doing it. And kudos for Putin for having a brass and the guts to say, I'm not afraid of all you guys that are hiding away. While the president of the United States is afraid of a three-minute softball interview on Super Bowl, this guy's given a 127-minute interview to the number one journalist in America that's feared and hated by the left? Really? That takes brass, so kudos to both of them. Adam. I, I do want to respect Tucker's balls. I mean, just to go there and be that dude, you got to respect that. So I don't want to just diminish that. Uh, you brought up George W. Bush. I remember in 2000 when um, Putin and Bush got together for the first time. You know, the famous quote from Bush is, I looked into his eyes and I knew he was going to be a man of peace. It's like, could you have been any more wrong, George W. Bush? So that's probably why he uh, has empathy towards him. You know, the thing to talk about freedom of speech, you know, Bill Maher covered this, you know, in, in Russia today, uh, this is the difference. Like, th- this is what we need to understand. There's, 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 there's this whole narrative that, you know, Putin's this strong man and there's this sort of like weird uh, obsession with uh, the strong man concept. And I get that the people want strong leadership, but Putin is not our friend. He's not our ally. He does not want the U.S. or the West to win at anything. He's aligning himself with China. You know, you can get 15 years uh, in jail in Russia for calling the Ukraine invasion a war. Meanwhile, there's been how many deaths in Russia since this all began? Uh, The latest count was 300,000 Russian deaths. Ukraine, 100,000. Yemen, by the way, not that we need to go into that, 400,000. Syria, half a million. So uh, the the, the amount of deaths from these wars is insane. And we won't even talk about what's going on in the Congo, 5 million people. The, the, the thing with Putin, and, and I will give uh, uh, Tucker credit on um, this one point because Vivek has been talking about the managerial class and the, bureauc- the bureaucracy and how many times did Putin basically spell out that I've had deals or I've had arrangements with U.S. presidents and then when the meeting was over, whether that's the CIA or the managerial class, they uprooted whatever sort of agreement there was so we called that out, and that's the one aspect I agree with. And I do want to give a shout-out to Tucker for asking the question the Wall Street Journal has been covering yeah, nonstop Evan. about the, the journalist who's been jailed wrongfully, Evan Gerskovich. Um, it's, uh, it was, I, I was happy to see that because I, one, of the, one of the things that you've recommended to anyone who attends the vault is to read the Wall Street yeah. Journal. They have not gone one day without Rob, let me ask you, which that. one is this that you have? This is when he asks about the journalist. About Evan? Yes. Okay, so why don't we go to this after our sponsor. Let's go to our sponsor first, and we'll come and play this clip. Go ahead and play your sponsor clip. Here's American Heart for Life. Financial industry since 9-11, the day before 9-11. And I've owned stocks, bonds, mutual funds, real estate, crypto, gold, you name it, I've owned it. But the one thing that's very important part of my portfolio all these years is gold. I love having a percentage of my net worth in gold that I have access to in case of many different things. That's why we chose to work with our new sponsor, American Hartford Gold. If you have retirement funds that you cannot afford to lose, American Hartford Gold will ship physical gold or silver directly to your door. Also, if you have retirement funds that you can't afford to lose, now is the time to call American Hartford Gold, a precious metal dealer you can trust. They have the finest products, amazing customer service, and a buyback commitment. 
They've earned a five-star rating from thousands of reviews and an A-plus from the Better Business Bureau. Tell them I sent you and they'll send you up to $5,000 worth of free silver on your first order. So click on the link in the description or call 866-939-6984. Again, 866-939-6984. There we go. Okay, so we're back. By the way, so th- this whole questioning about Evan, is it time for us where we can negotiate and have him back? Play play part of this clip here, Rob, just to see when Tucker asks this question. Go for it. I, I appreciate all the time uh, you've given us. I just got to ask you one last question, and that's about someone who's very famous in the United States, probably not here, Evan Gershkovitz, who's the Wall Street Journal reporter. He's 32, um, and he's been in prison for almost a year. Uh, this is a huge story in the United States, and I just want to ask you directly, without getting into the details of it or your version of what happened, if as a sign of your decency, you would be willing to release him to us and we'll bring him back to the United States. Мы столько сделали жестов доброй воли. We have done so many gestures of goodwill out of decency that I think we have run out of them. We have never seen anyone reciprocate to us in a similar manner. However, in theory, we can say that we do not rule out that we can do that if our partners take reciprocal steps. I mean, you know, when I talk the, the, the Man, the wordsmanship of He's putting so it good. together. <laughs> good for him to be able to do that, right? To 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 say what he said. Did you want to add? No, I, want, to I, I respect Tucker for asking that last yeah, question. Yeah. No doubt. Do but, you think? Do you think? Uh, okay, so do you think there's going to be any progress from here? Where, you know, a, a progress to negotiate a progress? Will any progress happen under Biden administration between Ukraine and Russia due to this interview? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Pep. There's no way. That they're going to make, they can't, they cannot do it. They want to keep, well, then we can't, by the way, Russia is demolishing Ukraine. Because Adam, I don't know, what, what number did you say about, you know, Ukrainians have lost way more soldiers than Russia. He no, said 100,000. No, 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 no. no. Uh, what the, the, he, said, he said Russia has lost 300,000. Yes. Ukraine's lost uh, 100,000. 100, yes. But reports have that Ukraine's at 400,000. Yeah. And Russia's at 400,000. Pretty. So there's, there's many different uh, uh, numbers that are being given. The one thing that is that we keep hearing about is that Ukraine out of nowhere last year decided to build a cemetery <laughs> with one and a half million new plots in it. Why? Nobody knows why, but you don't just build that out of nowhere if you only lost 100,000 yeah, people. But, but, but right. especially I think this, we know why. Yeah, well, <laughs> well, think about it, though. But if you guys think about it. A lot of deaths. We're... we're well, we're giving this $95 billion because we have to save them and save them. They are not going to win this war. Russia is the dominant force. We just have to keep money and getting in there. There's no way they're going to want to talk about peace because the guy's telling you in your face, I want to talk. Let's talk. They don't want to talk with yeah, so that's They want to keep that's fighting. Gonna, that's going to lead me to the next story. But let's wrap this up with Chris Wallace. Go ahead and play this clip here with Chris Wallace on his thoughts with Tucker and Putin interview. Tucker Carlson showed up in Moscow this week to interview Vladimir Putin. It turned out to be anything but an interview. (laughs) Putin droned on for two hours and seven minutes while Tucker sat there like an eager puppy. Mm. Occasionally, but rarely, he got in a question like this one about the power of the deep state in Washington. It sounds like you're describing a system that's not run by the people who are elected in your telling. That's right. That's right. But more telling than what Tucker asked is what he didn't ask. Nothing about why Putin invaded a sovereign country. Nothing about targeting civilians. Nothing about Russian war crimes. A reporter can ask Putin a tough question if he wants a real interview. Why is it that so many of the people that oppose Vladimir Putin end up dead or close to it? That's a strong question, man. But apparently that's not why Tucker went to Moscow. During the Cold War, gullible Westerners who spread Soviet propaganda were dismissed as useful idiots. But calling Tucker that is unfair to useful idiots. No, he's made a cynical decision to chase MAGA's affection for dictators. And what better way to cash in than Putin's Kremlin? 
Good okay. Point. So, so thoughts, Tom? Uh, I'll tell you, the jealousy in the American media is is palpable, uh, and the envy. It's jealous, not just jealousy anymore. It is just green eyed envy. You, you you are sitting there, Chris, and you know what? I like Chris Wallace, um, but let's facts are facts. You wanted to be elevated. Bill O'Reilly's going out. There's reorganizations going. They weren't going to elevate you at Fox. You didn't get your next career step. December 2021, 20, you go on almost a tearful goodbye on Fox saying you're going to be the pillar on CNN Plus when it launches in April of 22. You're going to be the lead guy. It doesn't even get off the ground. They had trouble selling advertisers. They had trouble getting hard promotions for that. They had trouble getting it off the ground. And you were one of the pillars that was supposed to be there. So then who's talking to Chris Wallace gets relegated to the backyard at CNN, CNN Max, a streaming service that's on the back end. And guess what? You did have an interview with Putin. Good job. You asked a question there that was kind of tough. Good job. But you didn't get the interview this time. And who's talking to Chris Wallace? Not a lot of people. And I think there's a lot of envy that's going on here. And so what you're seeing there is, a, you know, a, a guy who I regard, and I've got some respect for Chris Wallace. I've seen his work on Fox. But he's coming out as envious here. He's coming out as jealous. They're poking him, and they got destroyed. And if you want to take a look at ratings and views, they got destroyed. And so you, they're coming out with their talking points on this, and I think that's what's happening. And, you know, Chris Wallace, your dad went over and spoke to Ayatollah during a hot conflict. You know, come on. He's a shield. He, he was on. He was on Fox. He's that guy in the right. And then he switches teams and goes to CNN. I don't. I, I mean, professional. Yeah, he's awesome. But I don't respect anybody that's like sparking for one side. Then he's like, no, I'm going to go the other side. Who, who what, are what, you? What did Trump say to him to his face? He goes, you're, you're no Mike Wallace. You're not your dad. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He's by, by, by the way, if, if you want to watch a good documentary, watch a documentary of his father called I Am. Uh, Mike Wallace is here. Phenomenal documentary. Mm -hmm. It tells a story about Chris Wallace's brother, what happened to him. Anyways, yeah. it, it's worth watching. I will tell you this, that Chris Wallace, if you're watching this, the game's changing. It's called a long-form podcast. Tucker didn't just do an interview. He did a long-form podcast. It's a two-hour and seven-minute podcast, not a 45-minute thing. It's a very different format than what you're accustomed to, Chris. I know you sit there and you go do what you do. I know the Richard Nixon four-part interview that came out years ago, Watergate, all that stuff. Okay, fine. This is a podcast. It's called New Media. And New Media is you ask a question, you let the person talk. There's a reason why people like uh, uh, guys like Joe and Lex. They ask a question, they let the person talk, and they let the world decide. And the interviewer gets judged to say, I can't believe you didn't ask this. I can't believe you didn't ask that. It's like us. You know, we're such professional football players. Why did he not move away from the ball and it hit his foot in the San Francisco? If it wasn't for that fumble for San Francisco, we'd be, why did he play that call? We're all professional football coaches, right, experts, when it comes down to telling people what to do on TV. You're a professional one, but Tucker's right now number one at a spot and give the man his credit for where he's done. Uh, uh, so, Chris, that's what I would tell you. I think the game is changing. Podcast is a new way of doing it, not the teleprompter, somebody telling you in ear what to say. All right, let's go to the next story here. Uh, next story, I want to kind of go, because it goes with this, is the Senate, you know, the yeah. Senate bill that, that uh, just passed. Senate moves forward with Israel-Ukraine Israel, funding after vote on Super Bowl Sunday. So check this out. Do you remember when they called this the border bill and everybody on the left says look at these guys they don't even want to defend their border you know look, look at everything they're doing because out of 118 billion dollars 60 billion dollars of it was going to ukraine and then eventually guess what the establishment told you they said look we don't give a shit what you guys think we're gonna do it with or without you anyways voters you're gonna forget about this in about two months and you won't even remember what this bill was caused that's how you guys roll we're gonna get it done don't worry about it here's what we're doing while you guys are watching the Super Bowl, Senate moves forward with this bill. They voted on Sunday <laughs> to advance a $95 billion aid package to Ukraine, Israel, and Taiwan, signaling potential success for the bill after a weekend of negotiations. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer 
expressed determination stating we're going to keep working on this bill until the job is done. No, it's more like saying we're going to work on this bill while you're watching a Super Bowl. That's what it should say. The vote passing with 67 votes in favor marks progress in overcoming procedural hurdles with Senator Chris Murphy expressing optimism about the bill's eventual passage. Negotiations have been ongoing since Wednesday with the procedural votes, discussions, Expected to continue this week, despite previous setbacks, including a bill of $118 billion that failed due to Republicans' opposition to border security provisions, Schumer pushed for a revised bill of $95 billion. By the way, while this is taking place with the $95 billion, Bernie Sanders didn't participate. He didn't vote for, he didn't support this bill. Mm -hmm. Bernie's from the left. There was some, another, uh, a couple other people that didn't support the bill, but $95 billion on Super Bowl weekend. Adam, your thoughts on this? Well, here's some just details of that. Uh, it passed the Senate, uh, 70 to 29. Now it's going to go to the House. Mike Johnson, the new Speaker of the House, he's going to have a say in this matter. So the, there'll be some filibustering and there'll be some negotiations. <laughs> and we'll see what ends up happening here. But here's a breakdown. $60 billion is going to go to Ukraine. The, the world's happiest man today is... Voldemort Zelensky. He's getting the largest cash infusion we've given since Jeez. this war started. I think they've collectively given over $100 billion in aid total over the last two years. But now there's going to be a potential $60 billion. That'll be the largest um, infusion of cash they've had since this war has started. $14 billion will go to Israel uh, for their uh, air defense Iron Dome system. $9 billion billion will go to huma humanitarian aid in Gaza I'd like to see that go to the people and not typically what happens, go into the pockets of Hamas. And there's multiple Hamas leaders that are billionaires living in Qatar. So we'll see what, what happens with that money because there's a million people, refugees, that need to be taken care of um, in Gaza. Also, $5 billion will go to Taiwan and the Chinese in the China Sea and the Indo-Pacific. $2 billion will go to the Red Sea to face the Houthis and doing what they're doing. But... You know, McConnell, I rarely agree with what McConnell has to say, but I'll tell you why I do on this one right now. Um, you know, leaders lead. Uh, U.S. is a global superpower. Um, you know, the conversation that we have, should America be uh, interventionist? Should they be isolationists? And uh, th the reality is we don't want a hot war. We don't want to send our troops to war. So if funding and aid is what it takes, humanitarian aid, military aid, cash infusions to, to conflicts around the world that we actually have vested interest is what it takes, clearly the Senate believes in this, 70 to 29. Any, anytime Bernie Sanders votes against something, you might want to take the other side on that because that guy's very rarely right. McConnell said it's become fashionable in certain circles to disregard global interests as a global power. Our commitment has underpinned the longest drought of major conflict in, in human history. Idle work for idle minds, but that's no place for the U.S. Senate. So the Senate did not blink, and they're trying to pass this bill. That's so, what he's so by the way, you want to read Zelensky's tweet? Yeah, Why I sent you, that over, yeah. Yeah, if you want to pull it up and Rob just uh, so Zelensky uh, Adam, Zelensky said, said if you can punch, punch in on that a little bit, Rob. Uh, he said, I'm grateful to Senator, Senator Schumer, Chuck Schumer, and Leader Mitch McConnell, and every U.S. Senator who has supported continued assistance to Ukraine as we fight for freedom, democracy, and the values we all hold dear. For us in Ukraine, continued U.S. assistance helps to save human lives from Russian terror. It means that life will continue in our cities and we will triumph over war. Lastly, American assistance brings just peace in Ukraine closer and restores global stability, resulting in increased security and prosperity for all Americans in the free world. I'll read one more quote from a... Uh, another one of the uh, 22 Republican senators who voted for this bill, Senator Jerry Moran. He's a Republican from Kansas. Uh, he's an America first guy. He's a MAGA guy. He said emotionally tearing up. He said, I believe in America first, but unfortunately, American first means we have to engage in the world. Why? Because our enemies are on the march. So it's always easier to look the other way. But we had to do what we had to do. Vinny. I do. It's it's at the point where I'm, I'm. It's unbelievable that, like you said, I know when they're doing it, the timing is great. We're all sleeping, and these these deals are getting done behind these doors, and we wake up in the morning. It's like, eh, and you hear the number, ninety five billion. Nah, nobody cares. And this goes to prove my point. I said before, and you're talking about these uh, Democrats and Republicans. There's no left. There is no right. There's no Democrats versus Republicans. It's us against them. 
Okay. And I would say, because the only thing I think, think about people, all people are doing is talking, right? I would say protests, go in the streets, go to Washington, get, fill that whole place up and be like, no, we're not going to do it. But guess what? Because of January 6th setup, if you even think about going there, they're going to put your ass in jail for 25 years, which I think is one of the main reasons. But it's like, it's our money, bro. When you, all the busting your ass all, all day long, all the people, all the hardworking blue collar people, you're busting your ass trying to make ends meet. All that tax money is going for that type of shit. And we have, we have no say in it. And I don't know if you guys know about this. Um, Senator J.D. Vance from Ohio, Pat, he wrote an op-ed called The Republican Plot Against Donald Trump, where he lays out the establishment's GOP plot to use Ukraine funding to kneecap Donald Trump. And I really fast. He said, this is, and I quote, I've been confident that Donald Trump will be reelected as president, but this is how you snatch defeat from the jaws of victory. The Republican establishment is going to war for more Ukraine money. Uh, they don't care if it's a second term as collateral damage. But of course, they have an insurance plan. If Trump pulls it off, though, few have noticed buried in the bill that they just uh, signed is a text is a kill switch for the next Trump presidency. The legislation explicitly requires funding for Ukraine well into the next presidential term. They're saying the 2026. OK, the Washington Post has already reported uh, this provision was added to control Trump, uh, basically saying if if he in the future says no money for Ukraine, they can impeach him. They can be like, oh, you went against this bill. Kick him out. It's all ridiculous. And I'm just tired of us just not being asleep, Patrick. We have so much going on in our lives. Nobody's really. Do you support that money being sent? Well, this is my question. And this is what I want to get your guys' opinion on. You know, I said at the very beginning of the war, uh, I'm not uh, a fan of just invading a country and doing nothing about it. Okay. But how much money do we spend here? How much money do we spend in Afghanistan? How much money do we spend in Iraq? How much troops? How many civilians died? So I'm not in favor of hot wars or anything like that, but U.S. as a global superpower, we can't do nothing. You know, I know it's a sort of uh, in vogue to say zero, zero, nobody gets anything, zero for Ukraine, zero for Israel, zero for Taiwan, zero for our allies, but that's not what leaders do. I understand 56% of the GOP is, says we're doing too much to, in Ukraine, and I understand that concept. Only 11% say we're not doing enough, but my question is how much? How much? You know, uh, everyone's uh, favorite senator who's never was not running for re-election. You didn't ask. I asked the question. Yep. Do you think? Do you support this bill? Do you support us continuously sending money their way, while many of these guys, this is their war. We're fighting their war, and they're not paying the bill. We're paying the bill for NATO and Russian European allies to be protected. Why are we taking the debt for this? Do you support that? I, I, there needs to be a, an understanding here that we can't just continue to have a blank check. But to say zero, I feel like minimalizes uh, U.S.'s power in the world as a global superpower. So what are the ripple effects of, uh, of saying nothing? So we're just OK with Putin invading Ukraine and taking over Ukraine? Are we just OK with Xi invading Taiwan? Are we just OK with terrorism running rampant around the globe? Because if we don't do anything, what happens? What happens? Look at what's going on in the Middle East. If we step away, power vacuums are formed. And all of a sudden, our enemies that are running rampant around the world will step in and fill that vacuum. So, so, you're, so your, your fear problem. is that your fear is that if we don't do anything, Putin's going to get stronger. That's what your fear is. I think doing nothing sends a signal to autocrats around the world yeah. that U.S. will do nothing okay. when so, we do what we want so to do. So what are you going to do? What are you going to do when... Russia went from spending 80% when it was trade dollars using U.S. dollars to now down to 13%. And the transaction went from only 3% being won to now 30%. What are mm -hmm. you going to do when we keep spending this money and printing the money? And then all of a sudden, one day, the dollar collapses, then you're being affected by the money. Are you now going to come back and say, I wish we wouldn't have spent, sent all this money out there? Because the, the, the way this typically works... Mm -hmm is when we all become involved parties is when is when it starts making direct impact to us when we start feeling direct impact then we say what well you know i don't know if we're doing the right thing with this or not you know it's not, it's not cool like this whole thing with uh, uh, uh governor hokel what does she say kathy hokel kathy hokel yeah. whatever her name is governor hokel governor New York. she says you know we welcome you we welcome you right over here, we appreciate you. And then they're like, oh, really? Okay. Here's a few thousand illegal migrants. 
No, 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 no. Yep. You guys got to leave. Eric Adams, no, 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 no. You guys got to leave. Oh, what happened? Oh, when you're not directly impacted by it, it's a noble thing to do. The moment, boom, it hits your security and safety and your finances, then you're like, nah, man, I'm not for this. So all I'm saying is for us uh, in a situation like this, as much as they trashed the guy, the previous president, hey, we're going to do this, we're going to do that, we're going to do this. You know, he, there was no wars going on. Now we got all these wars going on. Who's making all the money here? And on the back end, BlackRock, State Street, Vanguard, I don't know, whichever one it was, Rob, if you can pull these guys up, they're getting a $400 billion contract to rebuild Ukraine. Type in $400 billion rebuild Ukraine, okay? It's like the, the Marshall Plan Follow on the steroids. It, it go, uh, is this the one, Rob? It, it's a story that was written about. If you can go back, it'll be one of the yep. stories. You type in news. You just type in news, you'll see it. So $400 billion, these guys are like, fantastic right there. You uh, No, that's not it. It's another one. I'll They're find rebuilding. it. I'll You're it. right. While oh, Pat, it up, can Pat, I Pat's just right. It's like yeah, Halliburton go got in Iraq 20 years ago. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, what you do, you, your analogy with Kathy Holcomb uh, in New York, Governor of New York, I think is spot on. So I, I'm not going to give you pushback that. What I will say is what you're talking to is about the BRICS, you know, Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa. We'll see what happens with that. Uh, Putin mentioned that in the interview as well. That, that is a concern of the U.S. dollar and the crumbling of the U.S. dollar. But that's been ongoing well before the Russian war. Sanctions, sanctions in U.S. dollar. Russia's been, when, when was BRICS originally formed? 2005? I, I find that, Rob. So th- this war, as much as it is sort of coalesced in that conversation, that is, a, okay, 2009. The war started in, in Ukraine in 2002. So the BRICS, that's already been formulated prior to what's going on here. But yes, it, it is exacerbating the problem. No doubt. But, but, but isn't wait, wait, it unbelievable? Can you just pull it up but to just show the $400 billion, Rob? Yeah. Just go to the link you just showed real quick. Isn't it unbelievable, though, Adam? Last week it was $118 billion. Let's protect our border oh, with, with Ukraine and Russia. So, now it's to hell with the border. We don't give a shit about us. We have to help them. And if you're not asking the question is, of that is, why, that it's unbelievable. Hold on, Adam, because you no. said you still didn't really answer the question. Are you cool with the $95 billion? Are you cool with that? I, just going? Well. Listen. Yes or no? I, I'm not cutting that check. But no. Okay. Yes, you so, are. The yeah, hell you aren't. Okay. Yeah, you are. So, hold on. Relax. Yeah, you are. Okay, just relax. I'm going to ask you a question. Yeah. How much money should we send our allies around the world? You give me a number. Let's say I'm cool with the 95. I'm cool with it. You're cool with it. Tell me how wait, much. Wait, wait. I'm so, uh, me just personally. Answer, me answer absolutely you. zero. Okay. Hold on. Absolutely zero. So you're an isolationist. I'm, no, no. I am an America first. America first. Our board, Adam. How can we? Be, we're we're a sinking we ship. We can still we're, deal with uh, the border. That's what, separate that bill. Bullshit. No, we we can't. You guys are talking border. out of both sides of your mouth, and I'll tell you why. How? Because you're like it's called the border bill, but all the money went to Ukraine yes. and Israel and yeah. Taiwan. Okay, cool. So now the border bill can be addressed independently as a single issue. Oh, no. no, no, Adam, 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 Adam. Let me God. let me let me ask this. Let me ask this. And by the way, the way we're feeling is the way America's feeling. Okay, meaning some are feeling like him, some are feeling like me, some are feeling like you and Tom. But America's feeling like this. This is not just a conversation that's taking place here. Here's a question I want to ask you. Okay, so uh, let's just say your kids are going to private school, okay, and you're down to your last $22,000 in a bank, you and your wife are married, you're, you got three kids, okay, and you had a setback. Your wife had a job. She got fired. She was bringing in 82 grand a year. Okay. And you can't count on that now. That 82 is gone. And you need to find a way to pay for this bill to go to school this next month, $1,500. Let's say it's $2,500, $800 a kid, right? I come to you and I say, hey, Adam, I need uh, $6,000. And you say, what do you mean you need $6,000? I need $6,000. Before you give me the six thousand dollars, who are you going to talk to? Your wife. Probably going to talk to your okay. wife. Okay, yeah. which you're, you're supposed to do that. So you go talk mm-hmm. to your wife, and you say, "Hey, babe, Pat needs money, man. I want to give him six thousand dollars." What do you think your wife's going to say? We get we need that money for our kids. She's going to say, yeah. "Babe, are you kidding me? We have twenty thousand dollars. We're down to twenty. We had a hundred last year. I had a job. I lost it. That eighty-two thousand. I can't get another job." The bill is due. How are you going to pay that $2,500? You want to give Pat $6,000? I know he's your friend. I know you want to help him. 
But bro, you got to pay your 25 for the kids first. You're like, no, I'm going to pay to my to Pat first. What is the responsible thing for you to do? Well, it sounds like your kids aren't going to private school anymore. It sounds like they need to be enrolled in public school at that point if that's the only money you have to perfect, life. Perfect. Stay, yeah, okay, let's yeah, go there as well. By the way, you're even taking my argument to a better place. Mm -hmm. I agree. So guess what? Let's remove some entitlement programs we have in America. Sure. Let's play that card. So now you put them in public school. So now your wife's convinced you to take your kids out of private school, put them in public school. Are you still giving me the $6,000? Well, the... For it depends on what your six thousand dollars is for. Am I getting return on my investment? You, okay, so now you're uh, you're now you're thinking from the perspective of investment. This is not an investment. You're not going to get the money back. This is invest. Well, if Trump wants this to be a loan, you are not getting this money back. No, that's BS. This is not a money coming back. Mm -hmm. You're never going to see a penny of me ever again. And you've been giving me but money. You're, you're investing in the global. World order. You're, you're uh, investing. Uh, no, there's no chaos. You're, you're investing in so a we, friend. We're just not gonna, like, like the, the Houthi situation. Well, we're just going to let them just stay, stay here. run like rebels in the stay Red here. Sea? No, this is not Houthis. Russia's but, not no, Houthis. That's part of it. Stay with this. That's part of it. So let's just say you give me the money, okay? Yeah. And, and you keep giving me the money. What I do is by you giving me the money is my wife and I, we have a lesser chance of being separated. I, just, I stop calling you and bitching about my finances. So now you're like, well, Ma, babe, I'm giving them the money so they can stay together. Meanwhile, your wife is like, bro, you may not stay together with me of what you're doing. So you trying to save here is affecting your life. That's what American people are having a hard time with. They're having a hard time with this concept to say, you just fooled us. You told us a border bill and everybody in the media said, look at the Republicans. They say they want to help the border, but none of them give a shit about the border. Right. And America bought it. Then three weeks later, after you call it a border bill, two weeks later, after you call it a border bill, you simply remove 20 billion out of it, 23 billion out of it, which the 23 billion was supposed to go to the border. Now you say, no, it's only a one ninety five billion billion dollar bill. It's Ukraine, you know, Taiwan and, and, and what do you call it? Israel. What's the point? You never had the intention of fixing the border. You wouldn't. And, and by the way, and then when you say the following, you're like, well, let's first fix this and then we'll go fix the border. No. Let's fix the border first, then let's go fix the Bro, world. Bro, I front. agree with you. Okay. I would rather them pass a border bill before this bill. Then perfect. I'm with, I'm then, with that. But they're not doing But the, that's not what they proposed. That's not, well, the, that's well, not the point. You're, you're it, asking it, which one I'd rather no, do. I'd not, rather no, do both. No, no, no. You it's said. It's called domestic no, and foreign no, agenda. You, no, you said. So no, you guys are acting like we can no, only in America first. Adam, I'm simply on stating what you said. You said, you said. Let's first get this $95 billion, and then let's go focus on the border. No, I, I, the house of border is not the first am, one. Am I a freaking senator? Am I the person proposing this bill? This. We're reacting to the news of the day. They passed this bill in the Senate. That's what we're discussing. Believe me, I would much rather them focus on the border, but they're not. Why? Ask but, myself why they're not putting the border first. Because they don't give a shit about us. They well, want we know the Democrats want, to, want, want an open border yeah, policy, so, and Trump— and Trump, what is Trump doing? Basically saying, do not pass a border bill. Why? Because it's politics. But he doesn't want a border Trump, bill because he is. wants to run on the fact that migrants are f running into the, our country like it's a open border situation, which it is. So he wants to run on that. Yeah. Adam, let me say That's his too. agenda. How I would much rather, to be super freaking clear here, I would much rather them pass a border bill first. But that's not what they did. They did a foreign aid package. Yeah. So and we're so commenting the trend, on that. And no, that's, but, but, the, but the trend, the continuous trend is the world comes before America. Yep. That's the continuous trend. That is the level of frustration with the American people. Thank you. That the world comes before America. That is bullshit. If you and I are friends, you, no matter how good of a friend I am to you, your wife comes first. Your kids comes first. You take care of your family. Then if you can help me, help me. But my job, your job, is to take care of your family first. The job of somebody here, if I have the resources I'm investing into Value Tim and PBD Podcast and Bay David Consulting and Manek and everything we're building, imagine if I'm like, nah, forget about this money. Let me do it here. Let me give it to this guy. Let me give it to this guy. And then we get smaller. We have fewer resources. The reason why we have more resources here is because we keep reinvesting into it. America's not reinvesting in protecting us at the southern border, but you don't feel it because there is no southern border in Miami. There is no southern border in Fort Lauderdale. There is nobody coming from the bottom except for maybe Cuba, and we haven't had that since the Muriel Boltliff in 1979. We don't have that here, so it's not felt. Rest of America is feeling it, 
and it's getting very frustrating where politicians are manipulating. Now, if this goes to the House, and what Which do they need, will. 218? They need 218? What yeah. was the number they said? If they need 218, and I don't know if it's going to pass or not, but if this passes, this is more of a reason where you see this is not about Republicans and Democrats. This is all about establishment and anti-establishment, because if Republicans don't have the backbone to stand strong to say, we will entertain a bill like this after we deal with the border, after we protect us first, then there is no lack of you know, a, a proper negotiation there. No one's doing a strong arm negotiation from the Republican side. The Republicans should stick together and say, listen, man, fix the damn border first. Then let's talk Ukraine, Israel and Taiwan. That's I all agree, I'm saying. But I, that's not what they did. So that's not what we're talking about. No, we are. I believe me, I, you know, the, the old I can walk and chew gum at the same time. Really? I'm not arguing with you right here. I would much rather the Senate propose a border bill. First, but it's an unbelievable would, that they, they didn't have them. We're in agreement here. I know. Guys. I, I'm with you. I'm like, with you're you. like I'm fucking being nope. an asshole. I agree with you. You are. No. Nope, no. Nope. Okay. How am I being an asshole, Tom? Because I'm commenting on the Let's fact. Let's hear what Tom has to say. You're not Go ahead, commenting. Tom. You're not commenting. You've been running over people for 20 damn minutes, and you, you you've you've reset arguments. Oh, so we do nothing. That's such a lazy retort. Why don't we come back to what's going on here? This is establishment versus anti-establishment. Anti-establishment. We want a line item veto. We want a balanced budget amendment. So this can't go on unchecked. Establishment. It's not a bill. It's a deal. And the deal contains all kinds of other provisions, as you just pointed out, that J.D. Vance said in an op-ed, and he's absolutely correct. There's earmarks. There's provisions. There's pork. There's a bunch of stuff. And then they put a brand Ending on it to flow to the media to deceive you and redirect your attention from what's really going on in there. Do I think there should be money for Iron Dome in there? I do. I do. But to get Iron Dome, to, to somebody that feels that strongly about it say, oh, but I also have to agree to this. That's the way these deals are made. They're not bills anymore. They're establishment deals that have a bunch of stuff in them. And I'm sure Zelensky is very pleased that he got the relief from it because the spring collection from Louis Vuitton is looking pretty good. And they're going to use they're be corrupting and they're buying and they're doing these things. It's flowing out. It's terrible. I go back to what Trump said about NATO, and your argument, I think, was lazy. What? Do we do nothing? No, we don't do nothing. Trump said, I'm all in on NATO. You are our friends. You are our allies. But in the middle of his administration, what did he say? You have to pick up the check, and I want you to pay your fair share. And Trump was back. I got stuff with my country that I'm going to deal with and deal with first. I'm not going to leave you behind. I'm not going to, uh, to abandon my foreign policy and my friends and my allies, but I'm going to take care of America first. But you, if I put participate and I help you need NATO, you got to pick up the check. These were not island nations with two palm trees with the hut. These were thriving economies that have resources and the ability to pay the check. And they wanted us to just keep flowing it out. That's why he went toe to toe with Germany and say, pick up the check. That is foreign policy. America first, work on the things in America, work on the things that matter to us. And on the foreign stage, find an equitable way that one thing I'll correct you on, Vinny, yep. one thing. You said tax money. It's not tax money. It's future debt, and it's big stacks of it that affects the long-term monetary system with an impact, which is exactly what happens with Russia shifting the currencies they're using to do trade. It's all interconnected. And I'm sorry I'm getting a little upset no, here, but Tom, I've been quiet I, I, for 20 minutes, and I, I, I'm telling you, I think, I think we got to keep our eye on the ball and what's really going on here. Tom, I appreciate your passion and your wisdom. I do. But, you know, Vinny wants to give zero. Yep. Cool. That's that's Vinny's opinion. Yep. Zero money for anybody. Let's say there is a border bill. Let's just say there is. We all should hope one. We all want that. Yes? Mm -hmm. You said that you would support the Iron Dome. Okay. They're going to give how much? $14 billion to Israel. Tell me an amount. I that said the guys that supported yeah. Iron Dome get cornered and they have to vote on a deal. I get it. It's I not get a bill. I, it's a deal. Okay. A bill, a deal. I get it. It's a proposal. But it's a bunch what of money for other it's stuff. It's a foreign I'm aid not. package. It's a bill. It's a deal. Where it's semantics. Foreign aid. Okay. It's not semantics. If I want to help Tom, Israel, here's my question. and I said, why can't we Whatever. just vote it's on a, that? It's a, it's, Tom, it's, Senator it's, Tom, I'm not going to let you vote on Iron Dome. If you want Iron Dome, then I got to get this. And I'm cornered. That's the yeah, way it works. I, I understand that. So how much money would you give to Ukraine? How much money? 
money would you give to Taiwan? How much money would you give to Israel? How much money would you give to these allies of ours? Vinny's at zero. How many are you at? The U.S. Senate is at 95. I don't give have a budget number. in front of me, but the first thing I'd be taking care of is the United States of America and our border. We've our already people, said that. Our okay. Okay. You're evading the question. So Just I'm give not me a number for the, the foreign question. aid policy. I, I don't Vinny's have at a zero. The U.S. Senate is at 95. Yeah. What number are you at? Ukraine is the most... Is the most Resource-rich and corrupt country. We could have given them support and give them things and give them arms and also have a way for them to pay it back and have them a way to participate in the solution. Do I have a spreadsheet to tell you what I would do? How much would you do? That's Tom, you're the biz doc. You probably do have a spreadsheet. No, I don't. But I would so take care of America first and I would make a so, rational, okay, a rational approach. But, but, let me, let me ask this, but, but let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. Say he says $5 billion. Say he says $20 billion. What's your follow-up question? I'm actually curious what your follow-up question is. I want to know if his number's zero is what I'm trying to get at. I, I is do, the number zero? I just said it wasn't zero. My number is absolutely zero. I don't okay. for this. And once we're fixed, then we can have a talk and we can loan people money and shit. But I don't understand why it's so absurd to hear somebody like me saying, fix us first to hell with everybody else. Until, wait till, when are you going to be happy? When some negative shit, something, something blows up or some effed up shit happens here, then we're going to go, oh, wait, well, oh, that money that we- Coming that, soon. To hell with that shit. Because that's the real problem. Is that? Because I have a story on that too. That's coming. And then when that happens, then everybody's tune's going to change and go, oh, I, I'm still wearing my Ukraine pin. To hell with everybody else until we're, we're fixed first. And guess what? Americans are now saying, what can we do? How about you said, it's not our tax money. It is our future jet. But Tom, yeah. we're going to pay with our taxes. How about, and I know we will we're never, never going to pay it. Americans, we're going to be inflated stop out. Stop paying our taxes. If everybody just said, you know what? <laughs> April, ta- whatever, we're not paying shit. Because you know what the situation is? It's almost like. You have a piggy bank in your house, but your parents keep taking the money out of the piggy bank and they go across the street to give it to those kids to fight the neighbors. Bullshit. That's our money, bro. That's my money in there. And I don't, I don't, it boggles my mind that more people aren't like, time out. F Zelensky, F him coming here with his, with his vest and his pins and all them kissing his ass. It's about war. It's about money. It's about Vanguard. It's about State Street. That's why I'm furious at him. I'm not saying don't give them money. Never. Until we're fixed, time out. Time out. Leave us the fuck alone. But, but, Sorry but, for my but, language. And by the way, can you go to, to Rob, that, that $411 billion World Bank said, I don't think we covered that yet. Just go to it right there. World Bank puts cost of rebuilding Ukraine at, a four, at $411 billion. Okay. Interesting. Then click the other story that you pulled up as well. I think it's right next to it, Rob, where it tells you who got the $400 billion contract. And it, right, right after Russia, okay, so, uh, there you go. The government of Zelensky, government of President, government of President Zelensky has announced it has called upon the consulting branches of BlackRock, Chase, as well as McKinsey and Company to help set up a fund of reconstruction. What a an interesting thing to do. Great business model, right? Swindle money from this place to go into this place, to go into that place, to go into this place. So let's talk about this. Let me ask you a question. Mm -hmm. Finances, family issues will happen, right? Everybody has a family member that goes through stuff. We all have friends that go through stuff. And we have people that we support financially. Uh, 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 Everybody does it. You do it, I do it, we've all done it, right? There's a difference between a friend calls who has never called you, and they say, hey, man, I'm embarrassed to even make this phone call. You, you ever had a call like that? You've had a call like that? Uh, yeah. Too often these days, right. to be honest with you, I'm, Pat. I, I'm, and, I'm, and I'm with you. because, yeah. it, And they say, hey, man, I'm embarrassed to make this call, bro, but psh, it's bad. I need five grand. If this guy's never asked you, mm-hmm. you may entertain it. And my rule is basic. I would say, look, man, I'm not going to lend you anything. Here's $2,000 but never ask me for, never paid back, but I'm not going to give you more. But this is yours. I don't want a loan back. Keep the money, right? Another guy calls you, okay? 500 bucks. Hey, 500, keep it, but you don't need to come back to me. This, I'm going to help you out, right? Okay. But then there's these two people in your life that every year knock on your door. And every year you have now trained them to keep coming back asking you for money. That's the problem. <laughs> for me, we need resources. God forbid something happens with Maduro in Venezuela and he decides to hurt his people and do something terrible. And we need to figure out a way to support some of the people there. Well, we haven't had to do that for many years. We'll go out there and say, hey, 
Here's $5 billion. We're going to help Colombia to make sure, da-da-da-da-da, here's $10 billion. Hey, Armenia's going through this. Let's support these Armenian people that they're being bullied by Azerbaijan and Turkey. We'll support. Hey, these guys are going through this. We'll support it. But Afghanistan was the case study to realize $2.5 trillion we spent. What happened? Nothing. That case study should teach us a lesson to not do this again here. For me, I want to see results. What are we really giving money for? Or do they have a chance of winning this war? Nope. And at what cost are we willing to go to? Are we willing to spend everything for them to win the war? Is the answer yes or no? The answer to me is no. I'm not willing to spend everything for them to win the war. Does that mean we go into debt? I want to first find out data-wise, do you even have a chance of beating these guys? We have intelligence. We have CIA. We can find out what's going on. How come we're not taking a decision from that standpoint? Why are we not talking about if we can even win the war or not? If you're not going to win the war, why do I keep funding you? And then this goes to You don't think those strategists have had those conversations with senators? I don't think so. You don't think that there's advisors on the ground saying, here's what's going on here? I actually don't think think so. Going in blind? I actually don't think. Really? Okay. They don't have I, a chance. Uh, Ukraine doesn't have I a chance. Actually, really? I actually don't think so. I think this is a this is a bigger thing to protect NATO, to show loyalty there, to own them. And I think this is a business play of these guys coming in and doing what they're doing because the guys on the back end are saying, hey, keep doing this because we're going to come and do the $411 million and we'll support you on your this and that. I think there's a lot of stuff going on behind. So this is one big Ponzi scheme is what you guys are saying. Oh, Ponzi schemes have been going on for many years used by through politicians. There's been many great movies and documentaries built on this where money flows through one person and goes into somebody else's pocket. Five of his generals or colonels were caught with how much money? $40 million? Yeah. And that's the one that's caught. You saw this story. I don't know if you've seen the yeah. story o- or not. Openly yeah. driving Bentleys? Yeah. Could I just question so, really fast? What, what's, what's the Ukrainian, the people on the ground? Uh, you never really hear. How, how are they feeling there it is. about it? Ukraine this? says corrupt officials stole $40 million to buy arms for the war employees of Ukraine from conspired against and embezzle $40 million to buy shit. Yeah. What's $40 million? What, what you, what, uh, not that I'm condoning that. What's $40 million on $160 billion? But the right question Point isn't oh, oh, But the right question isn't that. The question is, these dummies and idiots got caught. How about the guys that are brilliant who didn't get caught? How much money did they steal? Yeah. That's what I want to know These are valid questions. Yeah. Yeah. This is and a valid my, my conversation. Is because I spoke with a Ukrainian guy that I know at the gym. You know that the sentiment of Ukrainians are like, they don't want this shit. They don't want... This freaking war that you, Ukraine that yeah, no oh, shit they don't want no, this but, war. No, but guess what? But, but hold on. But why did it start, Adam? What? What? Did we not provoke? Like everything was chill, that, that, and then all of a sudden shit hit the fan. What? What happened? What, what year? What happened? What do you mean? I'm saying. I'm saying when he really went into Ukraine, nothing was chill in Ukraine since 2014. No, I, that's no, a whole. That's a whole another conversation. I, I, I understand about toppling but, regimes and regime change. But it's one thing I can condone, no doubt, is I don't want American troops. At war, like we did in Iraq, like we did in Afghanistan. I don't want that. Yeah. So if it has to fund other people's wars, you know, Russia has run out of so many military uh, personnel that they're now basically uh, recruiting people from Nepal to come fight with them. Did you hear about that? Fox News reported on that. They got Nepalese infantry guys coming in there right now. The people of Russia don't want this war either. Okay, the Russian army is estimated to have recruited more than 200 Nepali nationalists to fight in Ukraine. Is Nepal anywhere near Russia? No. Okay, but this is what they have to resort to. This is Putin's war against the West. All right, let's go to the next story. We've covered this plenty here. Uh, Trump does come out, to finish up the NATO story, Trump does come out and say that disregard the the NATO treaty, urge Russian attacks on uh, uh, allies. If you have the clip, Rob, yeah, go ahead and play this clip. This is him talking about, you know, if people don't pay their fair share for NATO, and a lot of people in mainstream media react to this. Go for it. The presidents of a big country stood up and said, well, sir, uh, if we don't pay and we're attacked by Russia, will you protect us? I said, You didn't pay, you're delinquent. He said, yes, let's say that happened. No, I would not protect you. In fact, I would encourage them to do whatever the hell they want. You gotta pay. That is dangerous rhetoric. Okay, so uh, unpack it. Why is that dangerous? That that is leadership. Why is that dangerous uh, rhetoric? Go ahead. There's, (laughs) words have meaning, words have power. Uh, You know, one of, I think the greatest uh, mishaps of the Trump administration was not using his brilliant marketing skills to make NATO pay. You know, we all remember the, the words, drain the swamp, lock her up, build the wall. Catchphrases, everybody knew that about Trump. He should have been out there saying, make NATO pay. I agree with that. But to come out there and bluster and say, 
Russia, go ahead and attack our allies. That's as antithetical to American democracy and America's interest as it gets. Now, there's a lot of good things that we could say about Trump. This isn't one of them. Well, by the way, I mean, he's following in Biden's footsteps because you know what Biden said before uh, Russia uh, invaded Ukraine. You know what he said? He goes, you know what? If you guys do a minor incursion, it's okay. So everybody says the same shit. And he said that. And then two weeks later, they attacked. OK, so listen, I like anybody that's saying America's first. And if you got the pain, you don't pay. That's giving people a warning. And I like it. I don't give a shit. So if you're delinquent on your bills, that's it. You Whatever. Can, you, well, you, how you much, can get killed. Adam, at what, how at, at how this, we have to keep people point, accountable? Not, we're not even living in reality. There's zero point. accountability. And if you don't start fighting fire with fire, Adam, everybody's so, walking all over. So us. Vinny, let's pull up what countries in NATO have paid and haven't paid. See if we can find that information. See how much money the EU and the people in NATO have actually contributed yeah. to this war. No, I feel you. Because we're acting as if the United States is the only country funding this entire operation. We're not the most. I think, we're the mo I think we're the I'm most. I'm sure we are, but our GDP is greater than any country but, put together. But here's the thing. I never thought the day would come where See, we would have to be chart, in Rob. You let them find it. I never thought the day would come that Americans would be arguing with Americans on how much we should be protecting All ourselves right, so and stop throwing money away. That's here ridiculous. So Poland who's right next to Russia, is number one. Okay, so Poland, you don't have to get invaded by, by, by Russia. Congratulations. The United States is number two. Rob, punch in a little you know bit. You know why Poland's number yeah. one? Do you know why Poland's number one? Tell me. Because, right next to Russia? No, no, because right after Ukraine, Poland is next. So yeah. they're, they have to support I, to, I to do that. So. Okay, so here are the countries that won't get invaded because they've paid their fair share. You got Greece, you got, what is that, Spain? Estonia. Estonia. I, Rob, this Finland, is Romania, That's Hungary, as as I can go. Lavaria, I got it. United Kingdom, Slovak Republic, France, okay. Montenegro, North so Macedonia. So meaning go anything from France and below, they're not hitting their 2% guideline. Right. Okay, so here yeah. are the countries that Trump will allow Russia to take over. Uh, Croatia, Albania, the Netherlands, Norway, Denmark, Germany. What is that one right there? Czechia. Chechnya, which is part of Russia, Portugal, I thought. Portugal, Italy. Portugal, Canada. Italy. Our friends in Italy. Uh, I think Canada, I see Sweden. Canada, Canada. Slovenia, Turkey, so, Spain, so, Belgium, Luxembourg. So these groups that are at 1.8, 1 1.5, 1 1.7, 1 1.6, their, their contribution should be 2% of GDP. That's what it is. What we're saying is Trump is totally cool with invading Luxembourg now. This is not the, what American leadership calls for. You should say, hey, listen, motherfuckers, we're going to have to inter like intervene. We're going to have to figure this out. But we're acting like they're not paying anything. Most of these countries that are below the 2% are at 1.7, 1.8. No, no, you're asking a wrong question. You're asking a wrong question. Zoom in a little bit, Rob, on at the top, what the top says. I don't know what the top says. So defense expenditure of this based as of 2015. Okay. So let me, let me Rob, pull up the Statista one. Oh, that's uh, a, what sure. does it say on the bottom, right? Just so you know, yes. Pull up 2020. the one from Statista. Light that, blue that, is two, four, uh, 2014. You see, pull up the Dark one from Statista. Two, pull, up Statista. Two, pull up the one from Statista. Well, Rob's pulling that up. Let's remember one thing. Do you see the one Every right there, Every country right. on this chart is protecting their own land except one. No, two, Canada. Canada He's yeah. right. But by the way, <sighs> if you actually want to give Trump credit here, uh, the stat shows what they were paying in 2014, and then when Trump's rhetoric was like, start paying more, and it went it. up. So I agree with Trump, make NATO pay. But the answer should not be like, if you don't pay your bills, uh, Russia takes over. Uh, that, that uh, that's not how this well, thing well, works. Well, he's saying you can't scam us, or well, guess what? We're going to turn our back on you. Like it's fair. It's I, fair. I, it's fair. I, I don't understand this isolationist uh, thought process here. We can take care of our country. I but would we're hope. not. We're not taking care of it. And I get what you're saying. But how is it Adam, isolationist hold, to hold, say hold, if you pay, I show no, up? No, but Adam, you're saying we could do you this. You pay, I help. Could, you're saying we could protect us and then protect the world. We're not protecting us. That's the problem that the average American is furious because we're talking about all this. I hate when people say that. That's the worst argument. Is we ha we're multitask. Bullshit. Fix us first. And then if we have time and money, okay, fine. But we're not fixed. We are, we are a sinking ship. We're the Titanic. You know what we're saying? Hey, more. Come on. In. No, no, no. We're fine. Bullshit. We're sinking. Go on your own damn boat. We're trying to fix our boat. That's the problem, bro. I'm not being, I'm not being that, 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 oh, just, just us. But in this case, America first until we're fixed, and then we could loan you guys money to help yourselves. What? You, you have Pre America first senators signing off on this and bill. I, 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 Why don't we ask them their opinion? Adam, that, that's why. Because they are MAGA deals. guys. They are America they're not first guys. No, no, but they're no. saying, yes, we need MAGA to is different. MAGA is different than left, right. Adam, they're on the same team. It's a uniparty, and they don't give a shit 
about us. It's about money. It's about power. And that's why Trump is such a, a, a thorn in their side, because there's he's got, none of those there's, people. There's got to be an element of accountability. So for me, you know, of course, Trump is not going to do that. Trump is saying that to scare the crap out of him. That's what you do. You're supposed to do that. It's called shit talking is what he's doing. So he's putting the fear upon these people in NATO to say, you better get your act together or else. You can't literally take it for what he's saying. I'm going to be a dictator for one day. Yeah. What's he going to do? <laughs> Fix the border and do this. It's not being a dictator like I'm going to tell you what to do, but it's good that the other side likes to use it. Okay, the, uh, Pat, I got to give you a pushback here, man. There's a difference between saying, quote unquote, no, I will not protect you. Cool. I get it. But in fact, I would encourage them to do whatever the hell they want that's a little step too far, Pat. Yeah. No, I'm, what, I'm, but I'm, what I'm telling you is that shit talking. That's shit talking. He's shit talking is what he's doing. And okay. by, by the way, it's worked. <laughs> While you're sitting here worried about this, for those four years, you never worried about war. Now, <laughs> as an Israeli yourself, your country I'm not Israeli, got— I'm American. As, as, a, as a person I'm Jewish. Who's, as I'm a not Ju Israeli. I was born in America. As a person whose family is from Israel. No one's from Israel. I'm from America. None of your family members are from Israel. No. Your I'm Jewish. Your parents, it doesn't lead back to Israel. 2,000 years ago when the Jews started the homeland. So how many, times have, you gone, how many times have you gone back to Israel? Four times. Does that country matter to you? Yes. Why? That's the Jewish homeland. So what are you arguing right now? I'm just saying I'm not from Israel. Okay, you're born here, but a yeah. guy that's Jewish who his war started here, your, your country yeah. got attacked. Israel got attacked during this administration Yeah. with these policies. During his, you don't have to worry about that and have a big old reaction to it. During I, his, that I, didn't cool happen. I'm cool with that. I, I, but because I'm supporting Trump. The reason thing. why is because he put the fear upon the enemies. And with NATO, he's trying to say, get your act together before I come in because you you're going to have to pay your fair I, share. I, I, like, I agree with you. You can say, you can make your point without encouraging Russia to invade your country. There's a difference between saying, pay yeah. your fucking bills or else between... Pay your fucking bills or else I'm going to encourage Russia to attack. Yeah, that's how you talk. So you get over uh, okay. it. He's 78 years old. He's been talking like that. And <laughs> to me, that's not something that the U.S. president does. Hey, well, uh, and guess what? You know, you know what it says to you? You know what it says to you? Uh, slightly half or more of America is so sick of the fake talk. About time somebody is actually willing to talk talk. And this guy's giving it to him. So if you don't like it, by the end of November, we're going to find out. Maybe we'll get another, another term of Biden. And maybe it'll be, you know, we'll have a person that talks less and, and makes, matter of fact, you know what, why don't we do this? Just uh, This next well, part is sponsored to you by Joe Biden. Can you go to the great <laughs> commercial he did I can't during wait. Super Bowl, which may, may be one of the greatest clips of all time, Tom, if uh, you can uh, play this. Just, it's fantastic. Watch <laughs> this here. Yeah. Go ahead. Super Bowl Sunday. If you're anything like me, He's you upset. like to be surrounded by a <laughs> snack or two while watching the big game. You know, when buying snacks for the game, you might have noticed one thing. Sports drinks bottles are smaller. What the? A bag of chips has fewer chips. Why? They're what? still charging it just as Why? much. Why? Huh? And as an ice cream lover, what makes me the most angry is that ice cream cartons have actually shrunk in Why? size. Why? Why? But not in price. God. I've had enough of what they call it. He has a Ukraine flag, by the way. It's a ripoff. Some companies are trying to pull a fast one by shrinking the products little by little and hoping you won't notice. Give me a break. Come on, man. The American public is tired of being played for suckers. I'm calling on companies to put a stop to this. Let's make sure businesses do the right thing now. I want to see the drummers in the back. What? <laughs> that's what well, I want to see. I want what to see is, well, hold on. They crush what all, the hell is he even what, talking hold on, about? But with all the shit that's happening in the world, what the hell is this old crazy bastard talking about ice cream and chips? I, I, what? Pat was asking why. Yeah, Go ahead. Why? 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 Yes. I'll tell you why. Because raw materials are more expensive, because inflation on the, at the at the producer level is more expensive, and they have to economically make changes. And in capitalism, that's what you do. And if you want to be an informed consumer, look right there, all the stickers that are right there on the shelf that tell you, what are you paying for ounce, how many ounces? It's right there. By law, it has to be there. This is, this is basically free market working, and you're trying to pit 
haves and have nots or one side on the other playing for suckers i'll tell you playing for suckers your administration and your and your economic policy let's talk about playing for suckers let's talk about the inflation that is that is gone and you do not have deflation happening in a lot of core prices and a lot of core products so to get on there and to speciously speak i'm calling for companies to make a stop to it hey how about legislation how about pick up your pick up your pen how about a few executive orders? Or are you just going to sit there on Super Bowl Sunday and and, and throw this this fake position at us? I, I found it was very unpresidential and very very specious. I'll uh, and by 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 the way, let me there, do this. There were two I'll, commercials. I'll come weren't to you. There? Yeah. I'll yeah, come to you. Sure. Sure. Yeah. And and James Carville comes out. If you can play this one, Rob. I don't know if you guys if there's a clip or not. If there is, if you want to play it. James Carville, the fact that Biden isn't doing Super Bowl interview and probably won't debate, says James Carville, is a sign. Go ahead and see what he says. Go for it. This is on CNN. He looks rough. And the media and the commentary love that. And I, I just do not understand. OK, so so speaking of chiseling in marble, we want you to live a long life. But someday the epitaph is, it's the economy, stupid. The words for which James Carville is known. Mm -hmm. The economy ebbs and flows. Economies get better. Age, it comes for us all. So if you were running the campaign, what do you do? Do you put them out more? Do you put them out less? How the hell do you handle this? Well, when you don't accept a Super Bowl interview. You're about, I don't know, pulling averages, you're three points down in a two-way uh, it's the biggest television audience, not even close. And you get a chance to do a 20, 25 minute interview on that day and you don't do it. That's a kind of sign that the staff or yourself doesn't have much confidence in you. There's no other way to read this. And he's not going to do debates. He is old. <laughs> so I, are you. I, I, <laughs> I know what it is because I'm almost as old as he is. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You're falling apart get sitting there. You never, you know, the day, today is the youngest you'll ever be for the rest of your life. Now, they have made the <laughs> choice that they want to go through with this. Uh, I, I know Democrats, myself, being one, fundraisers, donors, you know, door knockers, flushers. Volunteers, the whole democratic infrastructure of the country, we need to be told, okay, this is what the president's going to do. It's going to be all right. right. We can can skip this part here right now. He's not going to make it. The raging Cajun, James uh, James Carville. I mean, he's basically the Democrats. uh, John Kennedy, the senator from uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. from uh, hilarious uh, Louisiana. Yeah, Um, yeah. Look, here's. Biden had one of his worst weeks ever. And for Biden, that's saying something. We saw the gaffe of he called the Egyptian president, uh, CC, he called him the Mexican president. Jeez. He came back. He gave his speech. He had a horrible week. You know, what did Napoleon say when your enemy, uh, uh, never interrupt your enemy when he's making a mistake? This is my point with Trump. Biden's had the worst week ever. If I'm Trump, I just say, don't even, I'm not going to say anything. Just look at this buffoon over here. But no, Trump has to make this NATO comment and basically encourage Russia to attack more allies, where it's like now he's the talking point. Just let Biden gaff machine go. But Trump can't let stupid do what stupid do. He needs to infuse himself into it. So he should just let Biden just make these mistakes. But he didn't. I think the timing, though, is also. I think now now it's starting to rev up where they are they know what the deal is. We all know. We're not stupid. Now they're letting him go out there unprepared. Just go go, go, go out there and talk. What's, oh, yeah, this, this is the one, Rob? The- this is a video where after the uh, her report came out that they weren't going to charge uh, Joe Biden with the declassified document scandal because of his age and his memory lapses, this is when President Biden comes out and does a three-minute press conference where he doesn't make any sense <laughs> defending his cognitive skills. Go ahead, Rob. <laughs> President Biden, something the special counsel says in his report is that one of the reasons you were not charged is because, in his description, you are a well-meaning elderly man with a poor memory. I'm well-meaning, and I'm an elderly man, and I know what the hell I'm doing. I've been president, and I put this country back on its feet. I don't need his recommendation. It's How totally bad out. is your memory, oh, and can you continue as president? My memory is so bad, I let you speak. What is that? That's, uh, what the hell is that, that exactly? Funny. Memory has gotten worse. No, look, my memory is not good. My memory is fine. 
my memory. Take a look at what I've done since I've become president. What does that have to do with anything? None of you thought I could pass any of the things I got passed. The New Deal. Yeah. You know, I guess I just forgot what was going on. Yeah, you did. Mr. 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 President, Mr. President. This is a Democrat asking the question. How are you going to assuage them? And do you fear that this report is only going to fuel further concerns about your age? Only by some of you. Mr. President, 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 Mr. President,
And all those delegate rules, we're all going to find out about those at this vote in Chicago. And we're going to have different candidates that are running because the establishment behind the DNC is not going to let it happen. And now you're seeing all the media and all the stories and all the people yelling. Would at a press conference during his first year in office, would they have been allowed no, are you crazy? with credentials? Nope. They would have been called and they said, NBC, pull your guy out of here. Don't do that shit. Pull your guy out. That's what have happened the first year. Now they're there. This isn't just this isn't just Fox News arguing with the press secretary. These are this is a room full of people that line up with the Democrat Party yelling at the U.S. president. That doesn't happen, folks. Just look at the pictures mm-hmm. and listen to what you hear. And it's you guys so- all make very legitimate arguments here. Uh, zero pushback. You know, in fact, 86 percent of Americans thinks he's too old to run. In my opinion, he who was never meant to be a two-term president. He was meant to be a stopgap for whatever happened between Trump 2016 and 2020 and COVID. He came in there. He, he came in. He, he shouted about unity. He shouted about bringing together. But he's, he's, he's shifted to the left. He's clearly uh, declining in health. A year ago, he should have said, thank you for your service, America. Thank you for voting me in. The next leader will be X amount and just been a kingmaker. Instead, he's still in it, and it's it's getting very dubious and ugly. This actually does help Trump, though, if you think about it, because now they ever try to play this classified shit with him. He goes, wait a minute. I'm old. I'm sorry. I forgot. He could he could play that yeah. card for them. So good. good. By, by the way, meanwhile, Hillary Clinton, go, go ahead. And My play favorite. This. Well, go she's talking go again. Ahead, Rob. Play this oh, clip. So hot. All of this, the thing that we keep seeing in poll after poll after poll is concern about Biden's age. Mm-hmm. Full stop. Mm-hmm. What should he do on this? Does he is it is a matter of sort of like uh, underscoring his boundless energy mm-hmm. or or should he embrace his, you know, eight decades on Earth and the and the great wisdom he's gained through all of this? I, I, I mean, do you all have the above? All yeah, of the above. I mean, I you know, I talk to people in the White House all the time. Yeah. And of course you do. You know, they know it's an issue. But as I like to say, look, it's a legitimate issue. It's a legitimate issue for Trump, who's only three years younger. Right. So it's an issue. Once you say that, then. You have to also talk about what's at stake in the election, and I'm for Joe Biden for re-election on the merits, because I think he's done a really good job as president. So (laughs) I think he should continue to get out and campaign. He's been campaigning pretty vigorously across the country. And he actually does events where he's interacting with people, (laughs) unlike Trump, who stands on a stage and, you know. Uh, goes on and on. What for, a you what know, a loser! Um, what a what a what a, what a what a just hater no, loser. Pause it. Well, but look at the buckles. I thought it was a straight jacket. Could you said it before we came in? Gavin Newsom is on the same page as her, right, Pat? What do you mean? In what well, way? Gavin Newsom talking about oh, Biden. Yeah, yeah, yeah. By, by the way, let, let's go to Newsom. Oh, and hang I'm on, Vinny, this. Vinny. It's not on the same page. It's called reading the same script. Yeah, exactly. By the way, she's only two years younger than Trump. I don't know how she's talking. She's seventy six. Well, she's sitting there talking about. I think Bill Clinton's even younger than Trump. Yeah. And what's crazy, Bill Clinton hasn't been a president since 2000. Yeah. yeah. So, okay, Hillary, let's go through this Newsom yeah. story yeah. With, with Super Bowl. While the Super Bowl is taking place, Gavin Newsom networks in Vegas as oh, Biden dude. faces calls to quit. So what is Newsom doing networking in Vegas? I don't know what he's doing. What would he be doing? I mean, is there a job that maybe he could have here soon? The governor, amid speculation about a presidential bid, was a surprise guest at Fanatics billionaire Michael Rubin's luncheon in Las Vegas, where he mingled with notable figures and enjoyed upscale dining with one source stating he friends, his friends with Michael. He should be here at some point. Newsom's presence in Las Vegas coincides with mounting concerns about President Biden's age and fit, uh, fitness for office prompted speculation that Newsom could emerge as a strong contender for the Democratic nomination if Biden chooses not to run, with the article noting if Biden chooses not to run in November election, Newsom is seen as a strong possible contender for Democrat nomination. Anyways, while all this stuff is going on with uh, Oakland, he's over there at the game. Rob, can you play the clip of Newsom defending Biden? I don't know if you have it or not. If you do, there's a clip. Is this the one? Go ahead and play this clip. Same interview, by the way, coincidence, but go ahead. Mine would want to run uh, when you have someone of such esteem as our incumbent president of the United States with a record of accomplishments and a man of character, (laughs) a man of decency. I'm old school. Talk about loyalty. I'll, I'll go to ends of the earth for this guy. I really would. 
Loy- yeah. Decency. Lo- you somebody give this man an Oscar. Do you think he actually exactly. believes this the words that are coming so- out of his mouth? What are the chances he actually he, believes he, that he is in his the, heart? He is the epitome of just a lying politician snake. And like, do, he, I, I don't know, I think he believes everything because he's such a psychotic man. Like, oh, what are you he's talking? A, you got to realize, though, I mean, look, he's, some people think he's a winner. <laughs> he's a winner. He's, you know, he's so I mean, he's, he's Tom, what, do, what do you think he's doing? Tom, do you think he's out there actually raising money, talking to people sociopath. about 2024? You think he's just kind of being available so everybody can see his face? Well, is he? Well, I'm going to break that down. First of all, I agree with you. It's best supporting actor in a deceptive role. So it's <laughs> what's, what's going on here. I yeah. completely yeah. agree. Yeah. He's crushing it. it. Reading from the script. Number one. Number two. He is doing a lot of what Nikki Haley is doing right now. There's a lot of 2028 going on here. There's a lot of 2028 going on. You mean on, 2024? Right? No, 2028. There's a is he is he pushing a run in 2028? 100%. Is he also positioning him for right here right now? Yes, he is. But inside the DNC, inside there was criticism that he and his engine, he built his own engine, he built his own team, he built this exploratory committee, he built all that together and he went out and he got a little bit ahead of the game and they pulled him back. Remember, he went quiet for 60 days. Why was that? And then he goes over to China. Hey, I'm over a Xi and he's complimenting um, uh, the, he says, I'll buy two of these Chinese electric cars and send them back to California for me rather than Tesla. He goes off and does that. Then he gets quiet for a minute. He is desperately putting himself out there to be the alternative choice this year if that's needed. And the DNC keeps pulling him back a little bit easy does it and so that's why he goes in front of the microphone here and he overplays that anybody with eyes to see and a, and 10 cents of, of logic can look at it and say this guy doesn't believe this he's just he's he's doing an infomercial and a compelling uh a statement to go out there to seem like a team player that's what's going on but he is on one team and that is team gavin and that's all he wants to do position himself possible replacement 24 he absolutely is is hungry for that and there's a hell of a lot of placement going on for 28 meanwhile oakland is burning and descending into chaos and he can talk about california being the sixth largest economy in the world and i love when he says that because i say you can't even run that and you want to run the united states of america give me a break dude adam Uh, look he's as skilled and as (laughs) snaky as a politician (laughs) as it gets i mean you got to you know, you got to give him credit for playing the role that he's playing. He is towing the company line the way that he looked in the. He is as, as honorable and as decent as a man as it gets angrily. Oh. So he's playing his role. He's He knows that. Look, I, these odds right here that we're showing on screen right now, Michelle Obama, <clears throat> I would put Gavin way ahead of Michelle Obama because he's aspirationally showing up to every single interview. He's putting himself out there. He's networking. We've heard nothing but random rumors about Michelle Obama. She's given nothing to indicate that she's running. But you're a Vegas he odds be, guy. Look at that. I, I know. I mean, even I, Nikki. By the way, he's going to jump in front of Nikki Haley very, very soon. He's going to well, jump when she jumps a couple out, months. When she drops yeah. out, out of, but he's he's showing the one thing that Ron DeSantis did not show to Trump, which is loyalty. He even used the word loyalty. Yep. Intentionally. Yeah, and we talked about that a few months ago when I said. The, the position he's putting in, edifying Biden left and right nonstop to, to pin DeSantis as disloyal. But he's not worried about DeSantis anymore because yeah. it's him against whoever else. But, Welcome uh, back to Florida, <clears throat> Governor Ron DeSantis. Yep. Let's go to – go ahead, Tom. No, he's Tom, you good? Yeah. No, I was looking something else up. Oh, okay. All right. So let's go through a couple things here, and then Super we'll go Bowl. into Super Bowl. Yeah. Why Hollywood should be terrified of YouTube, not Netflix. Mm. Let's take a look at this. Business story, Tom, I'm coming to you on this one. All right. What is this? Page nine. All right. So why Hollywood should be terrified of YouTube, not Netflix? Netflix perceived triumph in the streaming wars, but uh, believes the dominance of YouTube, which outstrips Netflix in both viewing time and advertising revenue, with YouTube reporting a staggering nine point two billion dollars in ad revenue in Q4 alone, far surpassing Netflix advertising endeavors. YouTube allure extends to younger demographics with Gen Z showing a strong preference for user-generated content over traditional Hollywood fare, posing a significant threat to platforms like Netflix, especially in areas less appealing to Gen Z, such as live sports, where YouTube has yet to make a significant inroads. 
Despite its departure from traditional Hollywood content model, YouTube's emphasis on empowering creators has proven widely successful, resulting in substantial payouts to content creators like Mr. Beast and solidifying YouTube's position as the fourth largest paid TV service in the U.S., presenting a formidable challenge to both traditional Hollywood studios and streaming giants like Netflix. Tom, what's the story about? Adam, you're wrong. Wait, I'm sorry, everyone. That's just a reflex. <laughs> <laughs> Tom, your comedy career is killing it, bro. Wow, there I gotta go. buy tickets to that fucking show. There anyway, go. go ahead. Okay, thank you very much. Um, so what's going on here is Hollywood should be terrified of, of YouTube, but they should be very terrified of Netflix. So there's two sides of Hollywood. The distribution side, they should be terrified of YouTube. And then the creation side, I think they're already terrified of Netflix. Look, they're all trying to build streaming services. Netflix, the numbers just came out. Netflix has grown to $260 million and their revenue is up ever since they did the can't share your password. And guess what everybody did? So let's say I was sharing Vinny's password. I'm like, all right, all right, all right, I'll pay 16 bucks. There was not the fear or there was not the cancellation, people said, all right, I'll pay, and now the revenue's up. And even Disney with Hulu is saying, hey, no more sharing passwords on Hulu as of, I think they're talking about doing it in late March, and saying everybody's got to get a subscription. So on the streaming side, they should be very afraid of YouTube. You know, cable and satellite used to be their distribution. And, you know, DirecTV, what was the anchor of DirecTV? NFL Sunday Ticket. Who just paid a bajillion dollars to have NFL Sunday Ticket forever? YouTube TV. So now YouTube. What does that mean? What YouTube TV did is now they have a full lineup of channels. They're streaming to you along with the other YouTube content. And they bought the anchor tenant that was inside DirecTV. So now YouTube is arguably as powerful or more powerful than any of the cable distributors that Hollywood deals with. So they should be very afraid of that. How do, who, do you, who do you bet on long term? Who do you bet on long term? Oh, I'll tell you right now. Long, ter long term, I bet on a combination of YouTube and and Netflix, because YouTube has a tremendous amount. But, but between the two, is there one between the two or no? Are they fighting two different fights? If I'm, if there, it's two different fights. Okay. And it's two different fights. And if I'm at the casino, I put money on both of them. But in a casino, only one number can win. But in this game, I think both win. Netflix, 260 million subscribers. Disney Plus is stalled at 153, and now it's down to 151 and a half million. That's still a lot of people, but the, the growth has stopped, Pat. The Adam. growth has stopped. Yeah, uh, there's one clear answer here, and the answer is YouTube. Um, I don't need to cut down 20 trees to give you this answer. Here's the deal. There's something called the budget. <laughs> Tom, you're coming after me. <laughs> Uh, there's something it's called so a budget, easy. and then and then in this budget, there's something called the 50-30-20 rule. Okay, fifty percent of your budget. This is a personal finance advice for you guys out there. Fifty percent of your budget should go to your needs. Thirty percent can go to your wants, and twenty percent can go to your savings. Where am I going with this? YouTube is one of the needs. YouTube is information. YouTube is research. YouTube is getting smarter. Netflix is a want. You want to go Netflix and chill. You want to just erase your mind and be vapid for a couple hours, go on to Netflix and just Netflix and chill your life away and spend all your time and ten ninety nine a month, What's whatever vapid? it is. What's vapid? Vapid. Just, just vapid and nothing there. Oh. It's like a, it's not, so, it's not, so vapid. Is, 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 it's like is, lethargy, Pat. You know, we're learning new words around here. So, so read up. Partying so all night and buying Coke. I think is YouTube that in the is so much more powerful than Netflix. And I didn't need a whole case study and to give you that you, answer. You were vapping a lot right now, yeah. man. It's a you little too much vapping rapping, going on. I'm vapping and I've got some uh, asses you, clapping. You nailed one thing, too. The one thing that just recently happened. You said, you know, the password, you know the password sharing thing? Like Netflix cut them all out and it happened this week. So not only are they making a shitload of money because people are, are, are having to subscribe, you know how without many... Without protesting, by the way. Well, without protest, but you know how many X's were hit up? Like, because I was sharing passwords. I'm like, listen, yeah. I still love you. Just Save give me the money, damn code. Yeah, girl. I, got, I got logged out. <laughs> for Vinny, I told oh, you I have a restraining order. I, yeah, but babe, you. I just, I need to watch Hulu. <laughs> all my accounts got locked out this week. Boy. All right, let's go to the next one here. I want you to watch this clip of a billionaire telling what's going on to commercial real estate. Uh -oh. Rob, if you got this clip, go ahead and play this. Watch how he describes work from home in U.S. compared to other countries. Go ahead, Rob. I want to talk to you a little bit about the jobs in terms of office spaces. We've been, I've heard you talk about the balance sheet issue, and we know there's close to a trillion dollars of office space coming due. You've said a nice little recession is going to bring people back to, the, to these office Happened spaces. Happened today. Exactly. IBM so, said you have to go back to work. So, but this, this is a uniquely U.S. problem, you say. Well, now, we, we would have a problem in, in real estate 
in every sector of real estate, not just office, because of the 500 basis point increase in rates that was vertical. The fact that one asset class never recovered, hmm. people never went back to work in the United States, in the office, the office market has an existential crisis right now. And, and so, you know, there's, it's a $3 trillion asset class that's probably worth $1.8 trillion. There's $1.2 trillion of losses spread somewhere, and nobody knows exactly where it all is. And a, a signature bank was sold, and we bid on it. Um, you know, there were buildings in New York that were $100 million. The guy bought it for 200 the loan was 100 we thought it was worth $30 million. There's a building for sale right now in San Francisco. It was bought for 850 a foot. The loan was 450 a foot. They'll sell it for 250 a foot. Wow. I mean, that's 25 Quarter. cents on the dollar. That would mean we lost three quarters of the, of the total asset class. Now, this asset class is not just owned by rich people. It's owned by pension plans and Watch other this, people, that is small investors. Me. We're not just talking about towers. We're talking about the buildings that surround towns and municipalities. But what happens there is, to those there is a, there is a, what happens with there is a bright places. spot. The, the office situation is a completely U.S. phenomenon. I just was in Munich last week, and rents in Munich are up 15 percent. The vacancy rate in Munich is 2 percent for Class A. In, in Seoul, Korea, it's 1 percent. Um, in Tokyo, it's 4 percent. Yes, everyone's back to work except for Americans. We've gone off the deep end. We, we don't show up for work, we don't apply for jobs, and we don't feel like we have to go back to the office. Bingo. Wow. Mm -hmm. Bingo. The only country that is not gone back to work and working from office is America. Weird. Is America with commercial real estate. Now, a couple guys are, you know, completely being rebels. This one guy just bought $900 million worth of real estate. Damn. In San Francisco, out of all the cities, he bought Ian Jacobs, descendant of the Reichman of Real Estate Dynasty, seeks to invest approximately $900 million acquiring vacant office space in San Francisco, targeting an estimated 3 million square feet of property with $75 million already secured for his venture known as Project Eurus. Jacobs aims to pr uh, purchase office building at a substantial discount, approximately 70% below prevailing construction costs, signaling a potential investment opportunity amidst a fluctuating, fluctuating uh, market influenced by potential Federal Reserve rate cuts. Tom. How accurate is he to what he's saying, and how much of it will change in America? He's absolutely accurate, and that, and that was down there. We went down there. That was the iConnect conference. It was just a couple of weeks ago down in uh, Miami. So we've been down there and heard smart people talking about things, uh, stuff that not everyone and not all the media really even understands, and it's not complicated. But what he's absolutely right. What's happening in America is downtown and in the, these areas – surrounding municipalities exactly as he says there's vacancy rates and what's happened is therefore the demand is down so the price is down and what he is saying is is bubble like he said there's three trillion of total you know uh loan value out there but there's only 1.8 trillion of, of of actual asset value. So as an asset class, 1.2 tr trillion is missing. It's just like the big short where the housing values have went down, but it's on paper. But the minute someone has to transact is when it becomes real. That's what he's talking about, the one in, in uh, San Francisco. You know, in the 800s a foot is where they are, the fourth uh, that they bought. They financed half of it in the 400s a foot, and now they're willing to sell it at the 200s a foot and take the loss. So what's happening is there's is there's a lot of things that are cropping up right now. Number one, you're going to have the banks in trouble on the commercial real estate for the reasons he said. The second thing that's happened is we also have a housing crisis and a low-income housing crisis. And so there are a lot of organizations out there that are getting venture funding right now that are talking about converting high rises to condos and apartments to make affordable in city housing. I don't mean low income housing. This would just be affordable for young professionals, single professionals. So I think there's about to be a conversion number one, there's gonna be a terrible financial fallout because people are not gonna be able to pay their loans with with rent they're not receiving on the commercial side so number one there's going to be a fallout and adjustment which banks are going to win which are going to lose bet on jamie secondly and the, the, the private equity groups like he's talking about and the second thing there's going to be a repurposing of a lot of these buildings and we're going to see apartment buildings built within office buildings and we're already seeing venture funding companies right now doing exactly that this guy you just heard of he's worth 3.8 billion dollars with a hundred billion dollars of assets under management called Starwood. That's the chairman of yeah. who he just oh, really? Yeah, Very stern -like. He's he, not a regular He guy. looks rich. Yeah, I'm, he just, I'm gonna share just a quick story. Uh, real estate is a tricky game, man. Um, 
I'm not a real estate investor. You know, I'm a more of an equities guy. I'm in the stock market. I've never purchased a home. And, you know, I, I've, I've said that I think a lot of times it is overrated. It's a tricky game. I've seen people make massive amounts of money, and I've seen people lose massive amounts of money. Um, it's not easy. Um, where am I going with this? Uh, I have a friend that was a massive real estate investor, uh, massive, uh, in Miami. Uh, you might have met him. And uh, his company went under. And he was dealing with a lot of challenges and a lot of funding issues, especially with everything that's happening. And um, yesterday, I went to his funeral. What? Yeah, because he was worth millions, and he had to start over at zero. And uh, he decided to not start over. And he decided to just end it. Oh, sorry. And it was the most horrible, tragic, like, this is the most fun-loving, energetic, like, connector type of a guy. Anytime in Miami, it was like, hey, we're all having a big get-together. It's Christmas. It's holidays. Like, he was that guy. And, um, yeah, this happened uh, about a week ago. And nobody understood what happened. Um, we thought that it was... Uh, an overdose or something. I don't know. He, he, you know, he, he definitely would go out and party, but that, that wasn't his thing at all, at all. And his father, um, gave a speech yesterday at his memorial. And, you know, I don't look, his name is Oliver. Uh, I won't give you his last name. His father said, listen, I, I lived with him for the last seven weeks and we've been processing this entire situation. And we talked about life and death and reincarnation and Buddhism and Judaism and religion and meaning and purpose and vision and ultimately um, the understanding that he needed to start over and rebuild his entire multi-million dollar building, uh, business. And um, he didn't want to start over. And he took his own life. Oof, and it's sad and it's How horrible. Old? How old? He is my age. He's 43 years old. Damn. Sorry That's for your loss. Yeah, no, I mean it's it's Sucks. it's one of those things. We have a lot of people that that are they're in real estate and they think that it's oh you know just buy real estate and you're a millionaire now. It doesn't work that way. Interest, supply, demand, everything in the economy. Real estate is a tricky game. It's not it's not easy, um, and um, a lot of people uh, can go belly up because it's not liquid and uh, it's brick and mortar literally. And um, when the game changes and you know the current comes out of the ocean and you're left. Uh, swimming naked, so to speak, uh, it's not easy to recover. And it's a horrible tragedy. And uh, I'm sorry to even tell this story, but these are the types of stories that pop up um, when uh, these types of things happen in the economy. It's, it's believe it or not, this happens in, in stock market as well. Yeah. You, know, you know what happens when guys are in stocks. I mean, I heard stories like that when I got involved with Morgan Stanley, Dean Witter. Yeah. And no. that happened... Uh, uh, <clears throat> Day before 9 11, oh. we have one of the guys that this took place to. It's tough. I can only imagine. It's, and you know who typically it happens to? For the people that are risking everything, yep. hoping for an explosion, and boom, all of a sudden, market turns. It yep. is a very, to go from the identity of the guy that has money to go to this. Sure. But at the same time, and this is where you need God, this is where you need to yeah, uh, to to believe in a higher power to know that the future looks bright, no matter how ugly things may be. There's a lot of people that are watching this, you know, th that is not a story to inspire you. That is an story to challenge you to, to realize that there's better things in the future to look forward to. There was a study done about the guys uh, that were uh, committing suicide off the bridge where they jumped off and the survivors off the San Francisco Bay Bridge. Shit. It's a phenomenal document. It's not even a documentary. It's like a 30-minute thing that YouTube did, and they interviewed the survivors. You know what 100% of them said? What did they say? The moment I let go of my hand, I regretted my decision. Oh, my God. The moment I let go of my hand, I regretted my decision because all I thought about was everybody I loved. Oh. All I thought about is everybody I was going to hurt. Every one of them said they regretted doing that. It, it was a, it's a, I mean, I, I interviewed one of the guys. I interviewed one of the guys that did this for a living. It's a very interesting well, in, story. In, but in entrepreneurship, especially, there's so much pressure. I mean, wow. your most famous video ever is the life of an entrepreneur. 
you know, people see the end. People see the winning. People see the success. They, they see the, the cars and, the, uh, and everything, the accolades. They don't see all the pressure and the sleepless nights and the drama and anxiety and the pressure. They don't see it. Yeah, it's a tough. And it's tough to deal with, man. Let me, let me read this story for you sure. guys. Again, sorry for your loss. God man. rest his soul. Adam. Women firing rifle killed by two off-duty officers at Joel Osteen Church. This just happened recently. I think even Joel Osteen responded to it. Rob, if you can find that clip of him responding to it. Let me read this story. And then, uh, Vinny, if you can give us a little bit more, because I know you've been following the story closely. A woman in a trench coat entered a Houston megachurch. If you have the clip, a uh, megachurch of celebrity pastor Joel Osteen and started shooting Sunday afternoon, was killed by two off-duty officers. Uh, uh, they, they added a young child with a woman, was critically uh, hurt, and another man nearby was wounded. Houston uh, Police Chief Troy Finner said uh, the woman... Entered a church with a long gun and a backpack shortly before 2 p.m. on Sunday, accompanied by a child about four or five years old. He said the child was in critical condition after being taken to the hospital. The shooting happened between services at Mega Church uh, that is regularly attended by 45,000 people on a weekly basis, making it the third largest mega church in the U.S., according to Harvard Institute for Religion, Osteen televised, televised sermons, reach roughly 100 countries. So, Vinny, what, what happened here with the story that we're not hearing about? Well, okay, so, you also well, have this story on page 23, That's right? where you're yeah, going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, yeah and, I'll, and I'll let you go. Let's no, go, you go to ahead, Vin. I'll let, well, saying, Adam, if you can, after this, I'll let you read it, because I, I want people to understand this. This person uh, is a migrant from El Salvador, uh, 36-year-old Janice Moreno, criminal long history dating back to 2005. She had a Free Palestine sticker on the gun, identified as transgender, anti-Semitic material found in her apartment. He, she, also goes as Jeffrey Escalante Moreno. And I want to tell everybody this. We have an epidemic happening in this country that nobody's really talking about, especially the mainstream media, that is uh, the epidemic of trans mass shooters okay it keeps happening nobody keeps talking about it and the mainstream media covers it up they won't let us see their manifestos we know that these people have mental issues okay that they, and by the way a lot of these manifestos say that they hate straight people this person said that they hate christians and uh just just to go down this list guys colorado spring shooter <clears throat> Non-binary, Nashville school shooter, trans, Aberdeen shooter, trans, Denver school shooter, trans, Iowa school shooter, trans slash gender fluid, Lakewood sh uh, shooter, trans. And I have a message, okay, for the trans community. Now your group has given us the right to label, you could label us transphobic. And we're not phobic because you identify as a girl or a guy. You're shooting innocent people, innocent kids now I am transphobic. I'm phobic. I'm scared because you guys are going in the church and shooting up uh, kids and people. And it's like, Pat, why isn't anybody talking about it? That's the pro That's an issue. And going back to mental health. Remember how we talked about yep. that? That um, the mother that just got in trouble for the Colorado Michigan. guy, the uh, Michigan. It's like, when are we going to stop with all this? All oh, people's feelings and 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 they're living their truth. No, it's a mental health issue that's what we have to deal with because when, when is it going to stop notice how this isn't front that nobody's talking about this mm. we're talking about it i understand the super bowl happened and this bill is happening but that's the thing it's an epidemic of just trans shooters shooting tom, people left and right this? nothing's happening tom so there's a, there's a lot of confusion that was out here and there's a couple different reports that said I guess the coroner said that it was a biological female but regardless the things she's writing the things she's doing it shows that it's not about guns in this country, you know, and everybody's going to put the comments up. Here he comes. But it's about mental health and about getting help to people and having early warning systems and having a place to turn. And until we get back to that, and we've talked about this here on the podcast before you can, and by the way, RFK talked about it, that way back in history, when we decided to close our mental health hospitals, which were, which were built by the community for the communities so that there is a place where you could get help for people and if permanent um, hospitalization was required because they were just permanently had, you know, psychological you know, condition that they couldn't be out in real society, we had a place for them. Um, you know, out in Los Angeles, when I grew up, it was out in Camarillo. There was a very elaborate mental health uh uh, hospital it was in Camarillo, California. And right now we're in a state of denial about mental health. Nobody wants to talk about it. Everybody wants to, because if you talk about mental health, there's something to point at and it demands a solution, Pat. It demands a solution. And if you ignore it, you can keep blaming everybody else and you can fan the flames. And this is just horrifying that this person with this condition 
you know, goes into goes into a church to commit crime. And then you see all these things that were written. She had a, a you know, she had broken up with her husband. She wrote a bunch of inflammatory things about his faith, her. But everybody agrees this person, you know, to use a, a very common term, it's not very respectful, had a major screw loose. And there were probably people in her, her life that knew about it and could have gotten help to her. That's the problem. We need to deal with mental health and get systems and solutions so that, like I call 911, somebody breaking into my house, who do I call to get help for someone that I can see needs it before they hurt somebody else? And, that, and, that's, and that's going deep. And Adam, I know you want to uh, mm-hmm. go. That, Tom, and I get it. That's the mental heart part of like people warning, like, I'm going to kill or I'm hearing voices. Let's, let's strip it down. And to everybody the sim- else fanning the flames for other purposes while ignoring it. 100%. And then, well, the initial mental health is you're a female and you think that you're a man Let's just start there. Let's address that instead of just saying, live your, no, hey, guys, don't, you're, you're transphobic. No, no, no. You think in here that you're somebody else. I want you to get help. I didn't, you need to talk to somebody to figure it out, not just go, okay, you are what you are and everybody else has to walk around and pretend and live in your fantasy. I'm not living in that fantasy. Fully agree with you, Vinny. Um, You know, note to self. Uh, note to the community, the doctor community, the medical community, less transitions, more therapy. Uh, It's become the epidemic of our time where mental health, anxiety, uh, isolation, COVID exacerbated the problem. It got even worse, but social media amplifies it even more. And you get someone like this that gets access to a gun that is not clearly mentally fit. Speaking of actual mental, mental fitness, to be anywhere near around a gun. Um, uh, this person gets access to this. They decide to go to Lakewood uh, church, church, the number, big, biggest church in the country, right? Joel Osteen, and just start shooting innocent people. You know how I feel about these, these, uh, these uh, school shootings or church shootings. It's disgusting. It's horrible. It's weak. It's weak people that do this, um, and it needs to be rectified. Our RFK has talked about this. If there's anybody that knows about gun violence, he lost his father and his uncle, JFK, to gun violence. And uh, more therapy, less trans. I believe in transitions. Sean, I'd like my- to transition people with mental health issues and find out how many of them can be trans- transitioned back to being members of society who can who can coexist with the rest of us in a safe manner. And shout out yep. to the two off-duty officers that were there that shot and killed her, him. That's what's up. That's what's up. Yeah. I mean, look, you know, you know what what I'd like to see? I'd like to see attendance this weekend. I'd like to see. I'm curious to know. They get 45,000. I'd like to know how many people will attend this weekend to Lakewood Church. That's the number I'm interested in. You know what? Because the, the, will the number go to 48,000 or will the number go to 38,000? Will the, will the cause, you know, the event cause fear in parents to not bring their kids back or will it cause you know, even higher faith to increase the amount of people coming back? Will it increase the number of attendees to care, bring in their firearm with them? <laughs> Will it go from 1% of the attendees to 3% to 5%? I'm interested in data like that mm-hmm. on what's going to happen with the people <laughs> who are going back to the church because sometimes when this happens, man, it it gets us to, uh, be, I mean, naturally, especially if you got kids, the first thing you're thinking about is, hey, I'm, I'm going to protect my kids, whatever I can. I'm curious what happened. I think that's a thing. great point, and I, I believe that this will galvanize that congregation, and I think more people than ever will show up to that church yeah. and be there for their people. All right, that's what go, I think. Let's go, let's go wrap up, uh, um, let's go wrap up with the Super Bowl story <laughs> here. <laughs> so a few different things. Obviously, great fourth quarter, great overtime, a lot of different things. A lot of what would have happened if there's a lot of people that said, well, you know, the NFL had it controlled and it was supposed to be this and it was supposed to be that. The ball hitting the back of the guy's ankle was not the NFL's doing. It was a kick. Mm -hmm. There was a lot of weird things that happened with this game. It was phenomenal. Uh, Watching Mahomes walk around as if he's just playing in the backyard (laughs) with his buddies. Uh, But uh, I know you guys had a bet, right? And before we get into the bet, maybe let's get into some of the stories here, okay? Taylor Swift, intrigued, set to boost Super Bowl ratings. The numbers came back, and the numbers were, what's the number? I don't know if it's in this article or not, Rob, but I do know the number is 123. Most watched Super Bowl of all time. Ever. 123 million people ended up watching 
the Super Bowl. 123 million people ended up watching the Super Bowl. Rob, I don't know what page that's on, but for whatever reason, I don't see it here. Buddy. I don't think it's in your prep. It came out late last night. 123.4 okay. million tuned in. 123.4 wow. million tuned in. Biggest ever. Obviously, the Chiefs won back-to-back. -back. And by the way, a couple of interesting stats. Ever since Tyreek Hill left... The Chiefs, everybody said, that's it. It's over. Yeah. Tyreek Hill's the reason why Patrick Mahomes is winning. Well, for those who are Tyreek Hill fans who came to Miami, by the way, because he bet on Tua, they've been 7-0 and won two Super Bowls without him. Weird. 7-0 and in the playoffs, two Super Bowls without Tyreek Hill. I don't know what that says about it. He was the number one receiver thought, in the league this year. And he, he is. There's no question about it. And he made a dumb comment about uh, he did. Uh, a racist comment about Travis Kelsey when he, he bumped Andy Reid. It would have never happened with a black no, person if you did that, et cetera, comment. et cetera. So anyways, okay, so a few things. The, during the game, I think at the end of it, Biden posts this tweet, which, by the way, Biden's assistants or helpers or mm -hmm. yeah. Karine Jean-Pierre posted this tweet. <laughs> what was your reaction when he saw this, by the way? So I think we were texting it around. What was your initial well, reaction well, you, when he saw this? Well, you know, he's because he was sleeping. The post, it was t tweeted around 1040 p.m. He's in bed by 6 p.m. Let's be honest with each other. I think that that post. What uh, did well, he say in the tweet, What did he say, Rob? We are. Uh, just it, like we planned. Just like, yeah, we, just like, just like we drew we it up. Just yeah. like we just like we drew it up. It's just by like the way, we drew it up. it's okay. trying to make him look cool. There's absolutely zero way you could try to make him look cool. I don't know whose idea what it was. How many views did it have? Forty-three thousand. Yeah, uh, yeah, but how many views right there, Rob? Twenty-one million, two hundred thirteen million views up in the middle. Right there. Yeah. By the way, you're not going to make him look cool. You're giving in to what everybody was going to be talking about. And we'll get into this whole the whole conspiracy uh, or whatever. The Taylor Swift. It's 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 ridiculous. They're trying to make this cat look cool, but he's on his way out. So I don't even know what the hell. What, what's the point? Guys. What's the point? Guys, give him a little credit. Listen. It's not him. We talk about trolls all the time. Yeah. Don't. We had just had Michael Rappaport here, all-time troll. Yeah. Elon Musk, all-time. Yeah. You know, possibly the greatest. Jake Paul, Donald Trump, Kate, Trump, you know, he's he's trolling he didn't troll. the far right conspiracy he, theorists he didn't do it, Adam. who think that Taylor <laughs> Swift, I, this has all been one I did tell concoction. You, hold on. Okay. Did I, did I not? Did, and everybody's my witness out there. Yes. All the PBD podcast fans. I told you yep. there was absolutely no way that they were going to lose this game. And guess what? The whole game, it looked like they were going to lose. And by the way, why, did, just, why did you think they won? Let me explain something to you. Tell me why they won. Well, first of all, tell me why they won. Taylor Benny. Swift, let's, can I make a fact? Okay. She's made the NFL and the Chiefs almost a half a billion dollars this year. It's like 400 and some billion. She's made millennials and Gen Zer fans, football fans. Um, by the way, she was up there. She was with uh, rapper Ice Spice. Do you guys know who rapper Ice Spice, the girl just tweaking and whatever, no. dancing? Oh, you don't know who she is? You no. sort of got Okay, well, good for you. By the way, she was up there. This girl, Ice Spice, she's up there wearing You should have gone to the concert with me. I invited you. Mm -hmm. uh, listen, and by the way, you know Taylor Swift's lucky number 13 situation? Unlucky number 13 has significance for her. She was born on the 13th, turned 13 on Friday the 13th. Her first album went gold in guess how many weeks? 13. Number one song had a 13-second intro. Every time uh, they, she's won an award, she's been seated in, in seat 13, 13th row, or the 13th section of row M, which is letter 13. And by the way, uh, she's in there. What a weird relationship. Ice Spice is up there with her. She's wearing Balenciaga, which, as you guys know, they had that last year. They got in trouble for promoting uh, child abuse and satanic imagery with their ads. They got uh, they sued the production company, mm -hmm. but then they dismissed it for twenty five million. They said whatever. But now this is kind of weird. Ice Spice is up there. She's wearing and I had this talk with Mike. She's wearing an upside down cross of St. Peter, which, as some of you guys know, his martyrdom to represent. It's an upside down cross. Mike said it's an Alex Moss. Uh, representation that was gifted by um, Playboy Cardi. Now, check this out. She's flashing d devil horns, okay? Like, as we all know, this, you know, the Krasenstein brothers who are so hip and they know about hip-hop and, and rock and roll, they said that what she was doing was rock gestures. You guys tell me, what, by the way, besides wearing the Upside Down Cross in Balenciaga, tell me if this is a rock and roll thing or if this is the horns of the devil. Go ahead, go ahead show that. Show that. Like, look at, she knows the camera's on her. That's giving shout-out to, to the evil... That, that's evil. That's be, look at and Taylor's. You know what? A, what a role model she's drinking. But think about this. Let's let's not joke around. 
People were getting injured on the field, Pat, left and right. Who was their starting linebacker? He runs onto the field. You don't think she's like a Texas Longhorns fan? No, no, no she's not. She's not from Texas. She's from the Bronx. No, they're doing a guys, They're doing a kamikaze or something. Way, Here, is, slam it. This is. I like the slam at th- the end. This is. This is. Let's be real. This is mm-hmm. satanic. This isn't this. And then a uh, John Mayer had a girl. I forgot who this girl was, but she does the Baphomet sign, which is evil and then she gets caught and looks at john legend and she's like i'm sorry look at this look at this video look at it she throws up the sign that's an evil sign right here look boom and then she goes whoops oh she's like i'm sorry look i'm sorry i threw up the the satanic signs because by the way and let's be honest the music industry as we've heard from a bunch of artists is evil music puts a spell on you this is my opinion adam music can make mm-hmm. you cry it can make you happy it can make you like rock and all the depth it makes you want to kill people uh but have you seen the taylor swift concerts tom G- people are crying women are crying at them like their whole family just passed away and we've been warned prince warned us michael jackson warned us and bob dylan here's a clip of Bob, Bob Dylan. Oh, you got a whole setup for oh, this. Oh, yeah. Okay, Bob yeah, Dylan. You're, you're, uh, you're, I mean, Bob, this, this, Bob, that's well, that's well, Ed Bradley. This, yeah, but, but this is on 60 Minutes okay. with Ed Bradley. I didn't realize we had a whole setup already. Go, he, go, he, Vinny, he, go. He interviewed Bob Dylan, and guess what Bob Dylan said about why he keeps going with this thing? Go ahead, go ahead. You can play that, Rob. Why do you still do it? Why are you still out here? Well, it goes back to the destiny thing. I, mean, I made a bargain with it, you know, a long time ago, and I'm... Holding up my hand. What was your bargain? To get where um, I am now. Should, should I ask who you made the bargain with? <laughs> with, 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 you know, with the chief, uh, chief commander. On this earth. <laughs> and on this earth, and then, uh, and then in the world we can't see. You ever look at music that you've written and look mm-hmm. back at it and say, "Whoa, that mm-hmm. surprised me." I used to. Oh, I, I, I don't do that anymore. Uh, I don't know how I, I got to, to write those songs. That's good, right? That, that's mean, fine. But I'm just okay. saying, I'm just saying, can Adam. I, can I, am I allowed to talk yet? You can do whatever no, you no, want. No, 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 Vinny, this is great. But, but hold on. Was, right. I right, was I right that so they were going to win? You were, you were right. And I actually, I have something for you. I love it. Okay. Yeah. You know, it's so funny, Vinny. Yeah. And it's, I love you like a brother. Like, yeah. people don't understand that. I asked you the reason that the Chiefs won. Yeah. You're telling me Ice Spice. You're showing me devil. Bob Dylan videos. Yeah. You're talking about the devil. You're throwing up gang yep. signs. Yep. Not once. Not once did you say the following two, two words. Patrick Mahomes. Not once did you talk about the greatest quarterback of this current generation. We all know Tom Brady is the GOAT. But give a little credit where credit is due. It is so easy to say Taylor Swift, the devil, She's Bob a witch. Dylan. She's a witch. Sure. Yeah. But you're 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 marginalizing the greatness of I, Patrick Mahomes. Not at all. He had a little help, Adam. How many people got injured? Okay. Taylor Swift is up there. She says she's a witch. Yeah. Maybe she sprinkled a little. So when like, Michael Jordan was winning all those championships, I didn't see, well, you know, the devil might no, have No, hold on. Taylor Swift okay. wasn't even when alive. When Tom Brady was doing all that, Taylor yeah, Swift, of course she was. We talking Taylor, about? Well, during Michael Jordan? Taylor Swift wasn't around yeah, during was. Michael. No, she wasn't. She was alive. No, she, how old is Taylor Listen, Swift? We're going to have this argument. It's an argument. Like Adam, was I, Adam was I right? Was I right that they were going to win? You were right. No matter but, what. But why you were right? Is nothing to do with Taylor Swift. How do nothing you know? to do, How do you know? with the devil. Who's it has Bob to do Dylan? with the greatness okay. of Patrick I'm not, Mahomes. I'm not taking away nothing from Patrick You're Mahomes. You're marginalizing but, his greatness. No, no, not at all. But by the way, well, who was Bob Dylan talking about? What deal what with the devil? What the fuck does what, Bob Dylan what do you have mean? to do with the Super because Bowl? Because Taylor Vinny? Swift has some stank on it. That's what I'm saying. Okay, Vinny, Taylor actually, Swift you know how they, they just came out with the new uh, foreign aid package? It was yeah. $95 Bill, billion. Not, dollars. Point six billion. Yeah. Do you know that they added an extra decimal point to it yeah i actually have some evidence right here yeah pat would you give this over to, to <laughs> Vinny? See. Listen, this what does that Taylor say Swift. what does it this say on the top? it said aid package to fund wild theories oh let's just see it oh my is this taylor is this it guys this is what that happened five hundred dollars this is what happened for Vinny. i'm paying Vinny on time this is, like a gentleman and this but is, not because taylor swift this is taylor or the devil Do, it's because Patrick Mahomes is that dude. Do you know why? I, okay. You know, by the way, you know why I haven't watched and I haven't watched one football game all season. What did I say? And why would I ever bet this much money? Because she's involved, and and Pfizer boy was involved. There was no way. By the way, they were losing the entire game, weren't they? They were down the entire game, tied, and then by the way, and there was one play. I don't know if you guys saw it, Rob. There's one set of downs where Patrick Mahomes is running. Hold on, it's first down. He gets Vinny, second your down. Mind is hold on. 
elsewhere, hold on, hold on. and it's incredible to hold see on. in real time. Hold on, when you, you know can't what you're talking just about look at the situation and be like, "Wow, they gave him Patrick the first Mahomes down. and Travis Kelsey Adam, are actually Adam, really good at what Adam, they do." I don't. You're, you're missing the point. They won three Super Bowls in the last five you, years. I'll let you finish. Maybe they're just good at Adam, what they do. Vinny. Adam, I can't see you behind the money that you paid me because I was right. Listen, what I want to say is, so, so you were right last year when they won before I, Taylor was in the picture. I just you were last right. Year. She wasn't. So there last it's year. only this year that Taylor Guys. Swift's witchcraft yeah. has to do with well, their. She was there this year. Okay. Make your point, and, point and then let's this. move on. There's a play. Hold on, Adam. Adam. I was in the Adam. bathroom. What was the hold question? On. Hold on a second. Adam. Patrick Mahomes. And he even nailed it. I saw him. I saw exactly what he was talking about. Live. Probably gonna, He has a lot of time. He's probably going to be the best. He's the Michael Jordan of, of football. There's nothing right? to hold do on. with him, Vinny. Hold it's on. Taylor Swift. Adam, there's a... Well, maybe, she was playing. Adam, it's called rigged. The number one trending thing was rigged. rigged. So now, wait, ready for this. It's first and ten. Was it rigged 10. last year Adam, when they can won? can you shut up for was two seconds? Was it rigged last year when I they won? I wasn't. Was she there? Shut up. No. Watch this. Yeah, this that's is, my point, Vinny. Adam, you can't let me talk because you know I'm about to Play prove something. Conspiracy. This is not conspiracy. This is live. This is him, uh, Patrick Mahomes running for first and ten. He gets the second down. Down, and then the thing changes back to first down, so they give him another down to keep the drive. Go ahead, go ahead, Rob, play this. Watch this. First and ten. How does Rob have all watch. these videos I queued up? What watch is this. happening right Stop now? Stop talking. Watch. Okay, scroll. He rolls out. Watch. Okay, two yards. It should be what right now, Adam? Second and what? Second and whatever. Right. This is called rigged because they want them to win. Second yeah. and seven. Second that and was seven. Second and seven. And now watch this. Okay, nobody's really paying attention, Adam, because people are drinking. Now or watch Roger Goodell. No, watch the second button. Down. Wait, stop talking. <laughs> second down disappeared. Roger and presses the, the button. Roger, Roger Goodell pushes the button and watch this. Boop. First and ten. Okay. Explain that to me. Can, That's not can the, I explain it? Yeah. You okay. Can. So Vinny, the 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 living in outer space brain. Uh, it shows us one TikTok video is that a TikTok? from oh. from from who's this guy? Uh, Android seventy four followers. Okay, uh, but the the entire hundred million most watched Super Bowl of how much Vinny of all time? Yeah, nobody caught it. What do you mean nobody caught? Nobody oh, caught that. Obviously nobody they caught did. It. We watch the game. The referees are watching the game. The other team is watching the game. But no, Vinny's wild theories you, is the reason they won. You sound like somebody that's mad that they just Vinny, lost five hundred dollars. I, I, I shit five hundred dollars for your. Oh like really? Your shit out another okay? one. Give him for a time. That's fine. But listen, I'm just buys you off for budget. You can I'm, be bought. You're listen, bought. You're sold. You're I'm, paid I'm for just saying, by the devil. Lot of lot of injuries. Taylor might have Taylor might have had some voodoo dolls with all 49ers legs broken God, and stuff. I, I don't expect you to defend me or Vinny's wildness. I do expect you to at least talk about the greatness of Patrick Mahomes. Yeah, so I'm looking at this tweet. Was NFL run most Americans drunk? It wouldn't be a surprise. Americans wild. This this first place was a second down. It can be seen from point oh nine seconds where the member of the chain held the second. Yeah, okay. So it was a second down. And <clears throat> yeah, so, so hold on, what, what do you mean? So it was supposed to be second down, but the game yeah, first down. So no, no meaning. Meaning it was. All right, let me just send it to meaning you. Meaning so was what? It. Let me. S- oh, sorry. You Take it easy. Relax. Can you no, just, just pull the story up, uh, Adam? It's almost uh, like I, I me. Like, I'm actually curious like now. Some, yeah. Can you some, pull this up? And while he's pulling it up, Adam, think Here's about this. Total like evidence that Vinny's total just, pro is gone. sports. Rob, I just texted it yeah. to you. If you Are you the guy that believed in a Russian collusion and and nuclear war? Like, weren't you that guy? You're telling me that I'm crazy, but you believed. Russian well, collusion. Let's, let's and just see what this you is. Can't right even, you can't even talk. CBS brutal error. During brutal the fourth error, quarter oh, weird. of Super Bowl 58 caused massive confusion amongst NFL fans. So go to the Lord. Is that, what does brutal mean? Adam? Let's find out. They're about to prove you wrong You're talking shit when you're wrong. So. So. Let's go ahead. On the first play of the dub, Patrick Mahomes found Travis Kelsey for a nine-yard gain. Okay. But CBS reset the graphics to first and ten. Even Kelsey was one foot... One yard short of the first. It was set second and one. Instead, Mahomes got the first down in suing play. Anyway, so it was a it was a, uh, a mistake because this was sent to me as well on what's going on. Yeah. Here's what I will tell you. <clears throat> we're talking yesterday with uh, when the guys were watching the game, uh, 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 the guy who had his girl there, whose dad I really like, whose dad said, hey, send the DM to Joe Burrow. Do you remember that whole yeah. story? Yeah, anyway, yeah, yeah. I really Girl. liked her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I didn't want to say the name. but so, so anyway, so she's there and we're talking and she says, so do you think the NFL is rigged or not? I said, look, all it takes is two or three plays. Thank you. And the way the ref controls it is P.I., a holding play. There was a pl- holding play they didn't call. Saw that. On the Chiefs. And then there was a P.I. play they could have called. 
But again, it's a hit and miss. This is part of the game. Do I think one or two plays they do what they do? Yes. Am I taking anything away from the greatness of Patrick Mahomes? No. The guy is rock solid quarterback, poised, under control. You know, he's coming up, doing his thing. There's so many mistakes that can be made. The guy's a leader, and they won back-to-back. By the way, here's the argument. If they win next year, in a history of NFL, this has never happened. If they win next year. Repeat? It's never happened. Wow. Okay, Kelsey's coming back for that reason. Mm-hmm. Reed is coming back for that reason. If they do three-peat next year, guess who are the first two people that retire? Reed and Kelsey are gone. Retired. Yeah. They're only coming back for the three-peat. If they win next year, if they win next year, where do you put up Mahomes? If they win next year and he becomes the first quarterback ever to do a back-to-back-to-back, where do you put Mahomes? <sighs> Of all time? Because uh, remember, Troy Aikman joked about point, him four years ago, and they said, yeah. why don't you talk to this guy when he's got a chip? And now three years later, the tweet came back. The guy's got three <laughs> chips tied with Aikman, and he did it in his first how many years? You know, six or seven years? I don't know how many years. And Aikman played in the NFL for 12 years. What happens if he does back-to-back-to-back? Look, at that point, it just becomes a debate. Is it Brady or Mahomes? Mm -hmm. There used to be a time where there was a conversation that it was, is it Joe Montana? Is it Dan Marino? Is it John Elway? Is it Peyton Manning? Uh, that conversation is over. It's Tom Brady at the top of the mountain. It's not even close. However, Patrick Mahomes' greatness is number two right now. In terms of... He's been even if super- he does back-to-back, he's still number two. At this point in his career, yeah, I don't know if I disagree. 30, but I tell okay, you. But this is why I'm so fired up with Vinny. Because Vinny, I asked the reason they won. He did not... You didn't even mention... Patrick Mahomes once. You're talking about Ice Spice and the Devil. I made Give the be- a little credit where I, credit I, is due, I will, and let's live in reality. Adam, but here's my reality, though. You know the only reason I made this bet was what? Re- they could go back to the tapes and watch it. That's, I that's, said that's the cool. O- that's the reason you he, made the bet, on, but that's I, not the reason they won. I, Listen, I can have my opinion. That's we cool. saw one. What, we saw a couple of helps, and he just nailed it. Adam, can we, one or I'm two plays. I'm trying to get yeah. a question answered, guys. You guys can fight go. afterwards in the backyard. Go. We'll record it. Yeah. Rob, make sure we'll stream the fight after. Everybody's wanting <laughs> well, for well, well, Tom, well, if well, he wins back-to-back-to-back, to back, where do you put him? I, I put him smack dab in the middle of that conversation. I'll tell you why. Because, number one, nobody's done three-peat in the NFL. He would have done it and be the only one to do it. He then has four Super Bowls. There's a lot of guys that have two. There's a good number of guys that have two. Three is much different. Four, how many guys have four? Montana. Montana, so my Old school guy, Bradshaw. Yeah. Correct. And what? Brady. Just the GOAT. Well, Brady has seven. <laughs> Mahomes has three. I can count. So <laughs> if he goes I don't if know. He, the three-peat next year, and he's four. He's suddenly under age 30, the same number of rings that Montana and Bradshaw have. You're talking about he's in the middle of the conversation. Greatness go, doesn't always wait yeah. for the final stats. Greatness was there. Senna only won three championships. And for people such as me, I talk about Senna and Fangio. Fangio won when cars were horribly unsafe and drivers died. And somehow he wins five in that era. You, I'm glad with that Fangio got a little shout out uh, in today's podcast. Respect you, you, to you, Tom, sir. If so he wins the, back to back to back. He's in my conversation. Okay, let me tell you. He's smack in the middle of my Let me tell you what I think. I think the hardest sport to win back to back to back in out of the four sports is NFL. I think doing because it's it's not the best team doesn't win on Sunday. You mm-hmm. have to rest. Not the best. Because so, right. listen, some people could have said but Baltimore was a very good team this year. No, for, people forgot about them. Not even a conversation. Done, done, right? There was a lot of solid things. It's who shows up, and Purdy had a very good game. Mm -hmm. He didn't have any errors. He didn't throw any interceptions. Mahomes did. There was a lot of fumbles. There was a lot of screw-ups. There was a lot of mistakes. It could have easily been a a San Francisco win, but Mahomes picked it up. The team picked it up. If they went back to back to back, that is a very hard argument. Now, for the people that are Brady fans, here's the easiest argument that will wrap up the conversation. You ready? The first person that ever beats uh, Mahomes in a regular season, Brady. The first playoff loss ever that Mahomes had, Brady. Mm-hmm. The first Super Bowl loss Mahomes ever had is Brady, oh, wow. dog. Okay. I mean, that's a that's freaking a, wrap, okay, right? A yeah. so it's, and, and even they asked him yesterday. They asked him yesterday. They said, so what do you think about your chances? You know, go to all this. He says, listen, man, I've never beat the guy. He says he beat me in Super Bowl. He beat me this. He just flat out said it. He said he's the GOAT. Yeah. You got to love yeah. him. Because yeah. you know what LeBron would have said? LeBron would have gone. Yeah. 
Yeah, give me a break. You know, Mahomes yeah. is like, no. Nah. And that almost makes you later on want to make the argument for him being the GOAT. Yeah. The way he's given the respect mm. to Michael is a track to, not what do you call it, to Brady, who's the Michael of, you know, mm-hmm. he's the football Michael. Go ahead, Tom. You're trying to say something. No, and, and Hamilton, Lewis Hamilton, seven-time world champion, gave credit to Senna yeah. for his inspiration and for his greatness when he won his fifth championship. <laughs> by, by the way, I'm just no, FYI. No, seriously, but Tom, thank you for infusing Formula One. No, 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 no. I'm not. I, I, forget greatness. it. It doesn't matter what it doesn't matter what sport Hamilton was in. The players that are in the arena know the greatness, and when they speak about it with reverence. I listen. You might, you might you, like, I'm going to be dead serious. I lost. But you guys got to realize, huh. Lynn Dunn, the greatest badminton player of all time, <laughs> when he gave credit to Kento Momota, oh my for, God. it was un. <laughs> Believable. Because I mean, he, he didn't have to. He, <laughs> he didn't, he didn't have not to. at all. But he did. He could have done this but he yeah. did. with the badminton because jersey. Because badminton, and done this. when you play yes. the game, it's all in the wrist, guys. Yeah. It's all in the wrist. It's, it's a very unique hips. game. Anyways, okay. All right. Great podcast. <laughs> Rob, we got, pass out the let us, brownies, let, please. Let, let us recognize the people from last week. Last week, those who placed in order, we told you we're going to give. So here's what we're going to do, Rob. The first five that we do, do we start off with the uh, with the gloves and all the way down to the books? Let's do it that way. Okay. Let's do the first one is, an, uh, is a Ryan Garcia autograph. By the way, he announced here he's fighting Devin. Okay, they're actually doing yeah. a fight. You know, it's coming up. Something happened this weekend in, in, uh, in Vegas. Where, I, saw they, they were, they I saw that. They were a little that. I saw that. First one. Go ahead, Rob. The first one goes to the first winner of the gloves. We'll be shipping this out to you. Let's see what the number is. Give it to us. Boom. What is the number? 14346. Have the team look up the name. We'll give the recognition last. Says Vinny's therapist. That's amazing that this guy won't. Wow. Hey, at least I can pay for it with the five hundred dollars. Next one. Next to our next to our Trevor Bauer. Go for it, Rob. Remove him and then go to the next one. Yep. Go. Trevor Bauer sign da, ball. Da, da, a lot of people da, da. are saying Look at all those people. There's there. a lot of talks if Bauer's coming back. Hey yo. Bing. Next one goes to, this is a Trevor Bauer autograph, goes to 14418. Congrats. Go to the next one, Rob. Let's do the next one, the next one. And if the team is sending you names, let me know so I can announce them. This next one is also a Trevor Bauer ball, sign ball. We got 14101. And then let's do the last, uh, go forward, do the last five for the book. Here we go, here we go, here we go. And Rob, why don't we do this? Let's do the last five. You'll do it yourself. We'll ship it over to them. Guys, we got four more of these that Rob will do, but trust me, we'll reach out to you and, and send out the book to you, 14359. You got four Rob, more. Rob, you got all the names right on your end? we go live. We'll get them, and yeah, we'll, we'll them, notify yeah. the winners. We'll Congratulations, okay. everybody. Trust the process. Congratulations, everybody. Rob, when's our next podcast? We'll be live Thursday morning, 9 a.m. with the home team. Thursday morning, home team, 9 a.m. Take care, everybody. God bless. Bye-bye, bye-bye.